mine are. I'm gonna try this again. Alrighty, I think this time we are on for real, as apparently Nanonoko is having a little issue, so it's gonna be Roddy split screen to kick off the High Roller Super Millions Week 52, our anniversary edition. I can't believe it. It's been a week every single day, or every single Tuesday. A year straight, I spent my Tuesday evenings with Nanonoko, as we're gonna to try to bring him back for you guys having a minor technical difficulty but i believe you guys will be able to see me real soon and you guys will be able to see nanonoko as well week 52 it's a very special one of course because this one is part of the high roller week i believe it's event number uh 27 but the tldr is that there were a lot of day ones leading into a day two now we've got a pretty epic final table pretty sure you guys can hear me i know you guys can see me but we are working on that so that's going to be okay uh, there we are. There's Roddy. There is Nanonoko. Nanonoko, can you hear me and can you see me? I don't think he can. So I'm actually just gonna roll uh, without Nanonoko for a split second. We only have yeah. nine minutes. This is our actual pre-pre-show. And we have to do some final table betting discussion. Nano, I heard you. Uh, yes. Seems up to... <laughs> It's kind of funny because your picture that's frozen is very serious. But I think I, I can hear you. I think we're fine. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the final table betting. Yeah. Since uh, we only have... Connection, I don't know if it's perfect right now. So, uh... I can hear you. All right. Nanonoko is having some issues, so I'll just take it from here. I hear you every now and then, Nano. I just want you to know. Anyway, guys, this is our beautiful, sexy lineup for the anniversary edition of the High Roller Super Millions. It's been one year, nonstop, a weekly 10K, and the final table has been broadcasted on the Tuesday night for me, the Wednesday morning for Nanonoko. These are the nine poker players that have made it to this final table. It was a two or even a three day event. This is part of the High Roller Week that's taking place over at Gigi. And I don't know about you guys, but I think this is in a pretty amazing lineup. Uh, we have Chris Frank coming in as the ship leader. Adrian Matejas is in second. No, he's in third place. It's Joe Trump. Joe Trump had enough of making final tables with one or two big blinds. And he said, all right, Nanonoko and Roddy make fun of me. Sure, nerds. Sure, I'll show you what, we, what I'm made of. And this time he actually made it with 8.4 million chips. We're going to try to bring Nanonoko back for you guys as soon as possible. But for the people who are unfamiliar with this part of the show, basically we talk about final table betting for 10 minutes. Because in 7 minutes at this point, at 8 p.m. Central European Summertime, final table betting is going to be closed. So if you guys head over to the client now, you can find this tournament on the running tournaments. Click on the lobby and then click on that beautiful final table betting. This is normally where I ask Nanonoko what his picks are and what he would do. But I'll let you guys know what my two bets are. And they're pretty simple. They're pretty straightforward. And I actually wanted to let Nano pick one more bet for me, but we need to get him here for that. But I went for our anniversary edition with two very simple, straightforward bets. $100 on Jay Anderson, also known as Mr. Gamble, who has really became a show favorite, crowd favorite, and Nano and Roddy favorite over the last year. Uh, seems like a really fun dude. He even bented with us about the pocket force and he has made a ridiculous amount of final tables. He is one of the absolute most successful players we have in the High Roller Super Millions. And if he's made it to this final table, he deserves my bet. No, no, I think you're with me. I think I'm okay this time. We'll see. But uh, who, who, who are you talking about right now? Mr. Gamble, of course, mate. He's here. He's made it to the final table of our anniversary edition. We said so many times. We hope that guys like Bruno Walkman, Michael Adamo, and Mr. Gamble, Nicholas Asset, make it. Well, Mr. Gamble did make it, so I had to put a hundred bucks on him. I'm a simple man, and I know. You just put on one guy. No, I put on two guys. Okay, who's the other guy? Let me guess. The oh, guy right under him. <laughs> come on, do you even need to ask, Nanoka? You know who the other guy is. Um, I'm gonna assume that person is limitless, of course, uh, Victor Melanowski. He's, uh, he's got a decent stack here too, right? Like, I I'm pretty excited for this final table. Yes, uh, I was looking at the names of the guys who made it today too. I was like, oh, which one's going to make the final table? Because 
Adamo was chip leader, right? Like, uh, at least for like after the first flight. And I was like, I was super excited for him. And then, of course, Nicholas is dead in, the, in those guys. So we got some good names here. Lots of uh, familiar ones, you know, Lim uh, Limitless, Mr. Gamble, Mulocker's in there. I love to see Mulocker. We thought he made a great impression. Um, still has to get one of those top scores. Uh, Adrian Mateos. We got some new names too, Roddy. You a little bit worried? Uh, obviously, there is always something to be a little worried about. Uh, I don't think this is going to be a foregone conclusion. I don't know if you heard the part, but I'm just happy to see Judd Trump make it to another final table. But this time, he didn't come in with one or two big blinds made, or three or four big blinds, whatever he had those previous weeks. He actually comes in with 8.4 million chips. I don't know exactly how many big blinds it is. Uh, I can take a look at you guys real quick. 60! So the man went from an average of six big blinds to an average of 60 big blinds, making a final table. Uh, I was actually going to give you the option to place one final bet for me, mate, but obviously our uh -huh. show was a little bit thrown off. You've got four minutes to let me know what you think is a phenomenal bet. So you got a hundred bucks on Mr. Gamble and what, how much on the limit list right now? Also a hundred bucks. Also a hundred bucks. Wow. So how much are you tossing to me? Does it depend on who I pick? <laughs> uh, I'll let you know. You kind of know my betting standards. I don't want you to go too out of line. Uh, obviously, 200 bucks is enough money. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, the yeah, PLO yeah. guys need something to fight over too, but uh, feel free. Um, Man, uh, I, I really think you should put some money on the chip leader today. Uh, he's got 13 million chips, which is a lot more than the second place guy, a lot more than the third place guy. Um, he's a great player. It's a player we haven't seen at our final table. I'm, I'm gonna assume he doesn't play all the uh, the super millions, but I think he's a I think it's a safe bet for you, Roddy. Like if I was going super yellow, I would have told you Thomas Mulocker, but I think Chris Frank is very good, and um, I don't know how he's gonna do in this field today, but I don't know. It's just he's got too big of a chip lead. Okay, my only issue with this bet, and I obviously looked at it too, and I have to admit, I am not that familiar with Chris Frank, guys. I am still learning. Even after a year, there are still some players that I encountered that are very big deals and I'm not that familiar with. Uh, the problem is that like 30 million chips is a lot, right? But if you say, let's say Adrian Mateus knocks out Chris Putz, then Adrian Mateus has the same amount of chips as him. And isn't Adrian Mateus just as good? And I'm getting 6 to 1 on Adrian rather than the 3.9 oh. on Chris Frank. Well, I mean, look, has, wait, I don't remember, I actually don't remember. Has Adrian Mateos won our Super Millions yet? No, and he should have won Close. it once, but he punted with like Ace Deuce against Aces or something. Uh, got snap called. He was on track to win it with five people left, and then that was honestly a bit of a punt. Great player, but that was a punty night. Well, Roddy, you know what? You know what I'm really thinking, Dan? Because normally I would I would just put more money on Anderson and, and Malinowski personally, like. But I thought you wanted a third guy, so yeah, I was like, yeah. okay, which, third guy. Which, has third to be guy. a third guy. Yeah. What if, what if we put some money on Thomas Mulocker at the bottom at 20, 20 to one? How are you feeling about that? I was actually looking at it, and I think I like it, mate. <laughs> okay, because this is what I'm thinking. Look. You don't. You have two minutes, you, by the way, mate. You need to put up, it. put some money on Thomas Mulocker. If you want to put more money on, then just put a little bit more on the other two guys. But I would put on Thomas Mulocker at twenty to one. I, I like that bet a lot too. Just he's got to do good eventually. Hurry up, Roddy. Put in that money. All right, fifty bucks, mate. We're gonna run it up. Fifty dollars or turning into one K if Thomas Mulocker is able to run it up. I do find it very exciting to bet on the bottom guys because then you're immediately invested because you know that like limitless and mr gamble should be able to hang in there for a while but thomas mulocker he's gonna be on the clock so we're gonna get a early sweat going i like it i think i'm good with it then 50 bucks on thomas 100 bucks on limitless 100 bucks on mr gamble i gotta tell you mate i like our final table lineup yeah i like it too i don't know did you see that uh comment they threw at us in from production i think you'll love that one roddy you gotta tell them let me take a look i actually had a lot of things open uh, <laughs> apparently, he, uh, one of our producers got emailed by Mr. Gamble saying that he loves the show and he thinks that we are doing a great job. That's just because he loves Pocket Force as much as I love Pocket Force. No, no, no. <laughs> Here's the thing, Roddy. We know he actually watches the show because he he, he heard that Pocket Force always make us sets, right? It's not just one of those guys that did well. It's like, you know, great show. Thanks for running the tournament, but I've never seen a single minute of it. 
Uh, but this guy legitimately does, so that's cool to see. Uh, Mr. Gamble, 6.6 .6 million. Uh, look, if you told me one guy like I'd be super excited for when I first saw the list, it was Mr. Gamble. And then, of course, that yellow name right behind him. So these two guys, just phenomenal. You know, we got to be a little bit neutral here, though. And it probably does help that Mr. Gamble has been absolutely crushing it in the High Roller Super Millions. I think a lot of things in life become a little more enjoyable when you're doing really well. And if he has a top five finish tonight or better, he actually overtakes Nicholas Estet as the most profitable player in the High Roller Super Millions. How crazy is that? Or the winningest player, I should say. But I mean, those two are pretty close connected. It is pretty sick. Um... You know, I, I think he's going to do it, but, you know, it's just add some extra assignment to our anniversary edition of the Super Millions here. Um, I just want to ask you one question, though. For this Judd Trump guy, does the total bet there say 888 or am I just misreading that number right there? Because that is no. one hell of a coincidence. Uh, that is currently the total bet, but there is a good chance that obviously people always put some money on. There are actually people out there, no, 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 cool. believe it or not that listen to our last uh, little 10 minutes of free show banter. And then they're like, all right, if Nananoko is hyping up this dude, I'm going to put some money on them. You've probably made a lot of enemies. If Roddy has been watching these guys make it to the final table and he's on the money like he was with Lycon and when Nananoko tried to steal his pick, uh, they might follow my advice a little bit. I have to admit, I was not able to rail it this time because on Sunday they were still doing the qualifiers. And Monday is already a long day for me where I've got a long StarCraft show. And I was like, uh, I, I can't do it tonight, but I'll just see tomorrow morning who has made it to our final table. And when I saw this lineup made, I'm like, oh, we're going to have a good Tuesday evening. Let's go. As you guys know, yeah. final table betting is now officially closed, of course, because it's already been 12 minutes. Go ahead, Nena. What did you want to say? No, I, I don't even think you noticed what I was saying, because this is 888. Dude, Chinese people from China love the number 8. This guy's got $888 in bets. That means the whoever put I the know. final bet on this guy wanted to even out to guarantee this is some, some locked up money today. I mean... But did, I believe he got like ninth and ninth or whatever in our previous final tables. I don't know, but I'm excited, Roddy. Super. No, trust me, mate. I am very well aware that the Chinese players love the number eight <laughs> because every single time somebody is four betting me with a lot of action before, I'm like, hmm, it's a bit odd. Because what do the other guys have? I'm like, I have the feeling he's got pocket eights. <laughs> and they have pocket eights more often than not, mate. 80 big blinds, 90 big blinds. It doesn't stop a lot of the Chinese players over at GG Poker. It's very fun to see. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the profiles down, because especially the profile of a chip leader is a profile that I'm interested in. And then we can take a look at one of the hands he's had as well. Chris Frank, a WSOP 2017 bracelet winner, has, uh, well, apparently finished fifth in chips in a day one. So he already came in with a big stack and was able to carry that all the way to this final table. He has only played in six high roller super millions so far and this is his very first table it seems like he's only playing in the big ones with the big fields when it's part of a high roller week or a spring series festival that kind of stuff yeah um he's just a phenomenal player uh i remember playing with him live and some mtt at the world series and i was like wow this guy's like really good um you know like it's it's not just guy some guy running good but he's like always aggressive and then like like man how does he How's he always putting this pressure? How's he still raising and stuff like that? So I was pretty impressed with him. But I don't actually know his game that well. But uh, I've seen him before, and I think he like um, he's only playing the big, big super millions here. But uh, he's definitely very talented. And with this extra chip lead, I'm really liking uh, his chances. Whereas let's just say he had the same stack of everyone else. Why well, wouldn't be so hype uh, as much? All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Chris Frank had on his journey to this very first final table, but it's final table of the anniversary edition. And I actually kind of like this hand. And I want to do let you know, though, Nano, before you review this hand, that I'm pretty sure that Chris probably knows Kunku Web, uh, our player from South Africa in this hand. I have played with him too. And Kunku Web is the kind of guy to fire 12 bullets in a day one of an Oma event. Just Fire in all, fire in all, fire in the hole. Like in the same satellite, not like across 12 satellites. No, in one satellite, he's in for 10, 11, 12 bullets. This dude, I believe he's good, but I feel like he cannot be bothered to play with starting stack or small stacks. He just wants to run it up. So keep that in mind. 
Yeah, no, I remember Kunku Rep. He, he's a crazy player. Uh, yeah. He came into our chip, our, one of our supermoons as chip leader, was the, one of the craziest players, probably end up second place. Kind of like that one guy, Holiday Inn or whatever it was, you know, like they were just super crazy. Um, but this hand is, is still pretty crazy because you gotta remember, this is day two. We're no longer allowed to play re entries after this point, right? Um, so in this hand, Kunku Rap opens, gets three bed by Chris Frank. Chris Frank, you know, he's got pocket queens, makes a lot of sense. And the flop makes a lot of sense. You know, he C bets the flop with pocket queens and, you know, he gets called. But then things get really interesting on turn because now Kunku Rap takes the lead. Um, bets about a third of the pot on the king. Already a little scary, um, but Chris Frank makes the call knowing this guy's a bit crazy. And then River pairs the nine, Kunku Rap jams all in. Like it's kind of a weird play because he's he's kind of got three pair, but like with an overcard <laughs> out there, you know? And I think Chris Frank probably took a lot of time to make this call because this is a ton of chips, 800,000, right? Um, the guy's betting into you. Like if you read the run out, it's like, it's kind of hard to think of that many bluffs, but then when you just throw this profile onto the way the hand played, then you're like, okay, maybe I can find some bluffs, but like, yes, it's hard, right? Like the so three bet pot, this guy leads out into you on the king, jams into you on the nine, just trying to represent the biggest hand he could. And Chris Frank was like, this hand makes no sense. I'm gonna call and just hope I'm good. And that's what he did and he was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. I looked at it and I'm like, that's definitely not a pleasant call to make at queen uh, with queens. But yeah, maybe I really think that the fact that he was playing against Kunku Rap probably played a role in it because this dude, like, there's no way that I'm the only one who knows that he's crazy. There are many people out there that probably have him labeled as a very adventurous player. Let's keep it at that. And I think that's really helped making this call. So obviously a good call by Chris Frank. Let's go ahead and take a look at the profile of the man that's chasing him. And I believe that actually is Judd Trump. This is his third final table. And the other two final tables, not too long ago, as you guys can see, 2nd of May, 16th of May, you were right, Nananoko. It was in ninth place and it wasn't not in ninth place, but in his defense, legitimately came in with five big blinds. I love how this guy just came out of nowhere, now makes three final tables in basically a month and a week. And that makes the final table of our anniversary edition with 60 big blinds. I mean, uh, that, that's a pretty cool story if you ask me. Yeah, this guy, he's got the Chinese flag. Um, he just, and apparently this Judd Trump is a snooker player. Is that what you said last time? Uh, yep. or, or yeah, some kind of billards player. And yeah, he, he had five or less big blinds, plus maybe even three at one point. I don't remember the numbers, but they were really low today. He could get ninth again, though, Roddy. It is possible. No, no, that is absolutely not possible. If that happens, <laughs> mate, I'll do something very weird for you next week. But that ain't going to happen. Let's just go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Mr. Judd Trump had on his journey to this final table, where he finally comes in with a proper stack so we can truly see what he's made of. And this is actually quite the hand, Nanonoko. We can see the raise on the turn. And the river, I think, is an interesting one, but I really don't blame him for not betting out tell me what you see yeah um it doesn't really i don't really like the river check um doesn't really make that much sense to me honestly if you start raising the turn uh because well on the flop he check calls a flush draw makes the flush he raises it gets called and then the river he checks to be fair it kind of looks like the river he's a little bit he's being cautious here right like um mm -hmm. He's like, well, just in case you have a bigger flush. But then my logic is, well, if that if you were worried about a bigger flush, why'd you raise the turn? Because now you're blowing the pot even more. So it's a little bit kind of, maybe he just did the raise on a turn and then all of a sudden he just brain farted on the river or just like freaked out that this pot was too huge and we're so far into the tournament. Um, but I would love to see him bet the river uh, because if your opponent calls this turn, it does the 10 just doesn't improve your opponent. Like they already had you beat on the turn, you know what I mean? Uh so and I'm trying to think can maybe on the 10 my his opponent turn his hand into a bluff? I guess it's possible. Let's just say his opponent had the ace 10 with the ace of diamonds and then he just uh mm -hmm. sees a scary board, he gets checked him, he just rips it in and hopes for the best. It's possible. 
Um, I don't know what Judd Trump was thinking, but if that's what he was hoping for, then I can see it. But if, even if his opponent has a hand as strong as like pocket kings and pocket jacks, you might just check the river thinking, look, you ain't going to call me anyways unless you got a flush. So weird hand. Yeah, definitely a weird hand, but I do not think that he ever considered folding on the river. I think it was a mix between like, all right, this pot is very big and we are deep into the tournament and maybe you actually go for a, black, a bet, maybe even just a block a bet and then he just calls it off and wins a couple extra chips like that. Because you can also ask yourself, which uh, worst worst hands are going to call Jot Trump on the river if he bets out, right? I guess basically an ace queen or something, but that's perhaps about it. So, uh, funny one, but it's just cool to see him finally make it to the final table with a proper stack. I'm excited, man, because I railed him a couple of times on the Sunday night where I saw he made it deep again, even when he didn't make the final table, but he was always on the shorter end. And now we can finally see what he can do with chips. Let's take a look at the man who comes in third into this final table, or at least when it comes to the amount of chips that he's bringing into the final table. This man is no stranger to making it to the final nine of the High Roller Super Millions. As you guys can see, throughout the last year, has made it to six final tables. Uh, apparently did win it once. Okay, I kind of forgot about that. That must have been the first time he made the final table on September 1st, 2020. No, wait. Hmm. And it's a little weird because like, yeah, we say he fair. won one, but we're not showing the score on the bottom right. Uh, I assume he did based on his total Super Millions winning stuff. So. All right. Why don't we just go ahead and take a look at the hand? Obviously, Adrian Mateos is a stud, big name in the world of online poker, has made it to a lot of the final tables. I'm going to double check this. I don't think he's won, mate. I really don't think he's won. Uh, but let's just go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Adrian Mateos had. This is a fun one. I'll let you have some fun with it, and I'm going to double check our stats. <laughs> well, no, this is actually a really cool one, right? Um, in this hand, let's see. The button, the guy from Brazil limps the button, and we get a three-way flop. Checks around on the flop. Mateo bets big on the turn. Gets called by the button flatter. And then he goes for an overbet all-in. This is a really cool hand. It's about, it's like a 2.5x jam on a river. The Rhino had no flush draws on even possible. So when he jams here, it doesn't like you can't just put this guy on the bluff really like because you're gonna think he got a free flop in the small blind it's, it's very easy for him to four it's possible to have a random straight like a seven eight or you know the what is the other one two three and i th i think that when he saw bella marino check the flop uh it's just unlikely he's he's got a jack it's possible um the guy probably went limp a four on a button. So, like, he just went for the big plays. Like, look, I have way more nutted hands than you because um, you limped the button. And I don't think you're going to call. This is an amazing play. I, I like it a lot. Well, according to our stats, he did win it once. And I really don't remember. I remember one week where he was really supposed to win it. And I actually had some money on him. I had a little bet. I was really feeling it. And then when there were like five to go, it was chip laying and it was a little bit of a blow up. Maybe not quite the Rune F blow up that we've seen a long time ago, but he did win episode 42 apparently. So that's not too long ago, March 30th. Okay, so that was after the little blow up where he took out Alexei Boyka in the heads up. That was a big one too, $428,000. So Adrian Mateus apparently has what it takes to win a high roller super million, which we already knew, but it's still fun to hype it up. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the man that is chasing Adrian Mateos. And this is someone who is just really uh, near and dear to our heart at this point. Right, Nanonoko? Very first week we saw him, you're like, I don't know who this guy is. Mr. Gamble, he's playing well. Ah, this is so funny. I even had StarCraft players talking to me. He's like, hey, Roddy, just play like Mr. Gamble. I was like, yeah, I wish. I think he was the runner-up of our first week. Then the week after that, he came back and he won it. And that's not the only one he won, as he also won the GG Spring Series Festival main event for 1.5 million. Mr. Gamble is just a stud. He's he's just super good, man. Like, like not only did he win like a ten like the the regular edition, he won the Super GGSF one for 1.5 million, and he's got a chance to get like another huge score. Um, he's. He's aggressive, of course, we know that. I didn't know him the first time. He got second place, right? And then he got first place the week after. And I believe he also has got a lot of cash game roots. He's just all around really good. And one of the names I would say, like, I didn't know before the Super Millions 
Um, but after the super, you know after we've done a whole year of supermoons, I definitely remember him, and he's the standout, phenomenal player. And I think he's in the same class as all the other great names that we know about. Mm -hmm. I absolutely agree. And on top of that, he's been fun, right? Fun chat, fun emoji spam. Just uh, the man is kind of the complete package. Makes it very fun for us to cast these Tuesday evenings. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that Mr. Gamble had on his journey to the final table of our anniversary edition. He had pocket kings as he was battling it out with Enrico. This Enrico has been featured in a lot of these hands, by the way, and he had a monster stack. It's kind of a shame for him. Yeah, talk to me about these kings. Do you like the way that Mr. Gamble played his kings? It seems pretty straightforward. Race, bet, bet, bet. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know, like some people get quite worried with Pocket Kings here. Like they just kind of play a two street game when it gets paired like that. They're like, well, they'll probably call me two streets. But if I bet the third time, they almost always only call me with a, a 10 at least, right? Um, so Mr. Gamble, he bets the flop. He bets the turn on a river. He bets a third of the pot because he knows if he bets too big, his opponent's probably just going to run away and still gets called because he's got an aggressive image. and. To get called down by ace jack high here is pretty sick. Um, just goes to show like what kind of a player he is. Enrico just did not believe and it's probably because he's up against his opponent. I, mean, I, I the, the call on the turn on the flop is like, all right. And on the turn, you can be like, maybe, but just to call down three streets. I don't know. Maybe Enrico knows something about Mr. Gamble that we don't know, but I haven't seen Mr. Gamble just fire away three streets like this. I guess Enrico is maybe expecting his opponent to have some sort of a combo draw, maybe two spades, right? Or two over cards with spades, something along these lines. But that's, uh, that's quite a call down with a check of diamonds all the way to the end. Mr. Gamble obviously winning a big one, and that is absolutely what helped him to make it to this final table. Can't wait to see this man play some poker tonight. Let's take a look at the man who's on his heels when it comes to the amount of big blinds that they bring to this final table. And it is also a pretty familiar face to us at this point. Uh, has played in only 12 uh, high roller super millions, but he has made it to apparently only one final table. I guess I've seen him a lot of my tables. He has joined a couple of my tournaments. I've had him as my neighbor a few times. So this is a name that I have seen quite frequently over the last year. But he's back, Carlos Villamarín, making it to... I guess he also had a second place finish, and that also makes people stand out a bit more because we said his name many times at night. Yeah, cool to see Villamarín back, right? Yeah, uh, he's satellite in a 1K. He doesn't normally play the 10Ks, it seems, uh, but, you know, I guess he'll satellite in or he'll take a shot here and there. Um, if he, you know, you see him in your tournaments, he probably plays everything, but just not, he doesn't play like the 25Ks and 10Ks too regularly unless it's like a special, special moment. But you know, a second place finish is, is pretty good. I kind of, I vaguely remember that tournament. Um, I thought he was just kind of quite solid. He wasn't too out of line and, you know, just happened to fall on second place. So today, I expect kind of a similar style because if he satellited in, and that's what I remember. Um, I think he's just going to try to get a little pay jump here and there. Well, let's take a look at one of the hands that Carlos had that uh, perhaps did not help him all that much to make it to this final table. As if this hand didn't take place, there is a chance that he would have carried a few more chips to this final table. Because at this point, he still had 8.1 million chips, even after this hand, Nanonoko. So uh, obviously, before this hand, probably ended the hand with like 13 million chips something close to those lines seven six turn into a bluff gone terribly wrong talk to me what do you see that's uh, pretty sick i mean like i was thinking maybe this guy's gonna try to get some pay jumps here and there but this is a crazy move uh pretty far into the tournament right uh let's see so he flats on the button of the seven six of hearts and it gets checked him so he's got a little gut shot he bets the flop and enrico still calls him his little straight draw and you know ace high um i think flop's pretty same turn he bets again. He's basically like, well, maybe this guy's got ace king. He's got ace queen, ace jack, you know, something kind of weak because he didn't see bet the flop. He bets again, gets called again. Then when the ace comes on a river, he just rips it in. Uh, just trying really hard to represent that five, like six, five. Uh, if he's playing seven, six, two, it's possible to have six, five. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, he's just trying to represent it, but yeah, remember the ace is pretty scary because let's just say his opponent has a hand like pocket sevens or even like pocket jacks, queens and kings that want to play passively. The ace looks, 
just looks really naughty, right? If his opponent ha even has a hand like ace king, ace queen, it's still pretty tough because that's 3.2 million chips he shoved under. That's 40 big blinds, okay? And on a and there's a straight out there, so he just put his opponent to the test. Was thinking like, I don't think you got a five. I'm gonna try to represent it, and he got called down. It's just. It's a brilliant call too, you know, for Enrico, yeah. it's really tough. And we're learning a lot about Enrico today. I mean, we see bluffs, but then often it's 15 big blinds on the river and that's already like, oh, he's doing it, sometimes 20. To bet 40 big blinds with practically the not low, right? It's literally the not low. No, literally. <laughs> <laughs> that is honestly quite the play by Villamarine. And even after this hand, he still had 8.1 million chips. Unfortunately for him, he lost a few more down the line, but he still made it to our final table and let's see if he can run it up. Next up is the man who sure, sure, Nananoko, he won a high roll of Super Millions once, but that is so forgettable because we will always go back to the first time where he finally made it to our final table. And then in the end, Ferrari man was uh, just a little too much to tackle, but it is super cool. To see Victor Malinowski back, known as Limitless, obviously one of the GG guys as well. We've seen him even in the heads up, duking it out together with uh, Fedor Holtz. Um, I mean, what can we say about Limitless that hasn't been said yet? It's just good that, you know, on our anniversary edition, we've got some familiar faces, but not just familiar faces, like the big names, right? Uh, Limitless is, I remember his May 2nd win was very smooth. You know, February 21st, almost a smooth win. Just didn't close it out against that Ferrari man, like you said. Uh, it's going to be good. He's not, he's he's very action heavy. I'd love to see it. Yep, I'm really happy to see Limitless. Like I said it before, I think I watched the podcast he did with Joey. When in his words, he was still a baby. I think I watched it like three times. I thought it was a very cool podcast to hear this young, ambitious Polish kids just talking about his hopes and dreams in poker and how he's grinding it out all day every day uh, i thought it was a very fun little piece of perhaps even poker history at this point let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands that limitless had where he took a lot of chips of another man that's very near and dear to our heart ben cb benjamin roller uh this is quite the hand then Noko. i'll let you do the talking as i already took a long look at it yeah it looks like it's a multi-way pie he's got a set of sixes here uh, ben CB in the big blind of King Jack. And, you know, it checks to him three times. So it's, from his point of view, it's really easy to play. You got to set, you bet. It checked to you a turn, you bet again because you got position in the river. Well, you still have a set on the safest board possible. So you bet again. Um, I think the most interesting spot is actually the river. Yeah, the sizing he, on the river, right? Yeah, he bets a, a very small on the river. Like, actually less than what he bet on turns about quarter mm -hmm. pot. And basically, uh, I think this is a very read-dependent bet sizing because he knows Ben CB can make some pretty big folds, I think. Yep. So he wanted to just make sure he gets called. Let's just say Limitless put in half the pot. Ben CB probably folds this King Jack very easily. Um, it's a great read. Sometimes like you're like, well, maybe he would have missed out value on some other hands, but like probably he got the maximum just about, I would say, Roddy. I like that you say that because if you weren't going to say it, I'm going to be like, hey, no, 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 Carl, don't you think it's cool that he bet like a little bit smaller on the river than he bet on the turn? I think it's just specifically targeting a king of the player that Ben CB is, but obviously the star commentator that you are between the two of us, you took the words right out of my mouth. All right, let's go ahead and move on and then take a look at the profile of Chris Puerts. Or how do you say his last name? You should notice. I don't know who the hell this guy is, man. <laughs> okay. Well, he has played in five high rollers, Super Millions, has made it to uh, one final table before. Uh, apparently, that was on March 21st, took a seventh place, and perhaps that's why he didn't leave a stunning upset. Did satellite his way in, and he's also a WSOP bracelet runner up. All right, then, but today we learned. Yeah, um, I don't remember too much of his play. I didn't think it was a standout play on the March 21st, but getting seventh place, he probably didn't have that many chips. So I'm ready. To, you know, we're going to get some guys who happen to get far and they're going to want some big page ups and stuff like that. Him, I don't know who he is really, but that's always my first read when I don't know the guy. All right. Well, apparently, he did win a big uh, WPT in Germany, a 3,300 euro buy in event. 
walking away with over three hundred thousand dollars let's go ahead and take a look at one of the hands he had uh, i want to say we can maybe learn a little more about him but then a no call when you have aces and you race and you get called and then you flop top set and they uh they raise you all in or check raise you all in you're like all right mate <laughs> nice play i guess <laughs> i mean this is not a hand that really tells us a whole lot is it nope uh, it does not uh it looks just shows how luck lucky he was and how unlucky his opponent was to have a set of sixes here and just lose all the chips um i guess the only thing i can really point out is he three bet really tiny of aces does that mean something does it always mean aces i don't know but you know uh yeah gg nah probably not i feel like all these guys they switch it up right now they'll, they'll go for the tinier three bet sometimes with a smaller pocket pairs too or even the occasional king queen suited i don't think we can label him as a guy who raises small just because he's got aces because we see this hand let's go ahead and move on because we have two more profiles to cover and in five minutes it is time to kick off the anniversary edition of the high roller super millions next up is the guy and we've already covered a couple hands off uh, one of that he was on the good side of things the other one he was on the wrong side of it and rico kamoski has played apparently in 17 high rollers super million so far has made it to our final table once apparently the first edition of the year nananoko january 3rd 2021 that feels like three years ago to me with the amount of time that i've been spending inside of my room uh, i don't remember much of enrico but it's cool to see him back uh, apparently he's been having a field day over at gg poker because he does almost have four million in winnings yeah, I remember the first time he reached our final... Well, I guess this is the second final table. The time he reached our final table, he was a chip leader. And um, he was pretty... He was pretty crazy, actually. And reading all the hand receipts I read so far, it story is still checking out. So, yeah, he's only got 20 big blinds. He had a lot of big blinds. But if he can run it up, like, this, this is just a perfect lineup to just battle with. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Enrico had. I have the feeling that you have a lot to say about this hand. This is a, a, a confusing one to me. I mean, it's difficult to play pocket jacks, I guess. Take it away, Nananoko. Yeah, it's it's really just a crazy hand. Like, so he checks the flop. He checks back the flop. He checks back the turn with two jacks. Then his opponent min bets. Then he raises huge because he's like, how can my jacks ever be behind here, right? Like, if this guy had a king, would have bet a little bit bigger. If he had a seven, he would have bet bigger. And then he gets repopped. Sometimes you're always thinking, look. I don't want to raise the river because I don't want to get repop. And you're like, oh, but that never happens. But this time it actually happened. Um, it's just, I think he felt like he underrepped his hand and wants to go for some value. Then he got repopped and was just like, I don't, are you really this sick to bluff? And, and folded. It's just a crazy hand. Is it the best way to play the hand? Not really. But uh, this guy's definitely got some style, in my opinion. I also love that Ben is like, hey guys, I had the Queen of Diamonds. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. That's the German humor that we uh, that we miss in our lives. <laughs> Let's go ahead and take a look at the profile of the man who comes in with the tiniest stack to this final table. It's Thomas Mulucker. That's back-to-back -back final tables for him on the Tuesday evening. Because obviously last week he was also part of our final table of the 1K that was dominated by OP Pikachu, which I did predict, by the way. But I digress. Uh, it's really cool to see Thomas Mulocca back. Obviously, he doesn't have too many big blinds this time. But it says 18. That's honestly not bad. That's actually a lot for our short stack. So then there is a chance he's going to run it up. I put 50 bucks in you, Thomas. Let's just go ahead and take a look at one of his hands. Then, Anoka, you, thought you can talk more about Thomas Mulocca soon. Because we have something else to do as well. So, Ace Queen of Diamonds makes a big bet on the river. Gets bend the knee to bend the knee. And takes it down. What do you make of this hand? It's he's a, man. This guy's aggressive. He's a really good player. Um, I remember, like he's been showing off the way he plays, and I've been loving it every single time. Yeah, he hasn't had a big score yet, but he kind of got super cooler than some of those. I remember um, this one. Let's see. He calls a three bet, the ace queen calls a flop because he's got the ace queen high, and then he goes for a stab on the river, thinking, look, if this guy had a king, he probably would have probably bet the turn. Um, the fact that he keeps checking seems weak and decided to kind of move his opponent off of maybe the same hand or like a pocket jacks, pocket eight, something like this, and it worked. He's, he's just got phenomenal reads, in my opinion. Close that door, Roddy. Close it. You got it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, then a no call. 
I agree with everything you said. I really had to close my door. I was going to get insane. I was like, the door is going to be on screen. So this means it is time to actually start the main event of the evening. And that is obviously live poker for the upcoming hours. And we're going to find out who takes down the anniversary edition of the High Roller Super Millions. But not before. I've got a very cool little announcement. GG has officially launched their store. GGstore.com. All one word. So GGstore.com where you guys can order some cool GG products. I think at this point we've got some t-shirts, some hoodies, some caps, and a face mask as well. Hopefully we don't need to use those forever. You know, I guess in Asia, people have always liked to use face masks. I realized that when I yeah. used to travel to Korea and China. It's kind of like using it there. Uh, over time, more products will be added to the store. So if you take a look at it today, you're like, mm, kind of cool, but maybe not quite my thing yet. Make sure to revisit the store in a little while because GG is going to add many more products. I don't know about you, no, no, but I've got two GG hoodies and it is actually finally getting warm in the Netherlands. I don't know if you can see, by the way, but I've been working on my tan, mate. Uh, so I haven't really been able to wear my hoodies over uh, the last two weeks because it's finally heating up over here. But I really like my hoodies and I took a look at the store already and I was like, oh, cool, some more. I was like, all right, whose DMs do I got to slide into? to get some more gg clothes you know what i mean but we'll talk more about it later as you guys can see we have the seat selection process currently taking place nanonoko who's gonna win our anniversary Roddy, i edition. don't i don't want to take your picks or anything so can you just go first i don't want to i know there's multiple guys you might pick but who who's your pick you please go first for this anniversary it's actually very difficult so i really wouldn't mind it if you go first nanonoko you're sure Absolutely. it doesn't matter who i pick it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter who you piss. It doesn't doesn't matter. I see. Well, then my pick is Mr. Gamble, Jay Anderson. He's my favorite player. I think that uh, he's just so talented, and he's going to overtake Lena 900 today, guaranteed, all-time money. Go ahead. It was going to be my pick, I kid you not. I just wanted to see if you would pick someone else. <laughs> but I'll let you have Mr. Gamble, and I hope he takes it down with pocket force. Then I'll just go for Limitless. I mean, I put 100 bucks on him. I think Limitless is an absolute... Just a, a final boss. Uh, I don't know. I, I like to do it. I think he's awesome. I think he's a great character to have in the world of poker. And he played really well the last time he's made it to our final table. And he played incredibly well the time he was the runner-up. Everything up to the heads-up part was phenomenal. So I'll go limitless. As you guys can see, the cards are in the virtual air. And the first hand is going to take place between Mr. Gambo, who defends his big blind with ace-nine offsuit against the king-queen offsuit opening of our ship leader chris frank that's right and you know pay jumps are already big because this is a, a massive field guaranteed 122k um well almost a million bucks up top like this is gonna be good but this is tough competition right like we don't got no like true unknown players here that just suck right like they're just folding every single hand and happen to win the tournament or anything today very tough lineup um the guys at the top are very good the guys at the bottom are very good here so i'm excited it has checked down to the river chris frank chip leader is going to go for some value now with the king queen don't think anderson's gonna all of a sudden pay him off though just mm. just wouldn't make sense to me no i would be a bit <laughs> out of character adrian mateus apparently would have fluffed a full house but i don't think we can really blame adrian for not opening six four of spades under the gun this Chris Frank's playing, he just snap raised so fast. He's chip leader. Like, you don't know him, but he, <laughs> he just I like how, I like how he shows. He's like, don't worry, guys. I'm not doing the chip leader thing. I'm not raising every hand just because I'm the chip leader. I really have it. Now it's three hands in a row. The man's starting off with a triple raise. Oh, one hell of a way to let everyone know that, yeah, you've got all the chips. But you're also the one who's going to set the pace. It's pretty funny, too, because, like, he shows the ace, ten of hearts, which is... It's like, I've got a real hand for a chip leader. You know what I mean? Like, for, yeah. for like, a medium stack, maybe it's not a real hand. Um, Adrian's got a solid hand, but he's going to let it go. Just, the chip leader's wow. going to run away with this. Tournament's over. It comes out flying, three for three. I don't think we've seen that too, uh, too many times. And he actually has a good hand, too, on his big line. Nelanoka, one year in, are we going to witness someone make the golden wall an actual thing and win 18 hands in a row. <laughs> I mean, like it's, 
we're still going. If he wins this one, it's very possible. He's going to raise us up. We are going to see a flop, though. Don't think Jet Trump's going to gonna lay down ace nine suited preflop. Um, but you see that he just limp here preflop. Definitely optimal when you're up against a chip leader. You don't want to like blow up the pot for no reason. I That's guess four about... raises in a row, by the way, Nanaka. <laughs> yeah. So wow, he's limp re raising. See the ace nine. It will usually will work here, but the thing is, this opponent's got jacked in suited, and he's like, this guy won three hands in a row. Raise my. It did seem suspicious, didn't it? Oh, he's ah. <laughs> first blood there for Joe Trump. Well done, well played. Showing us that he's not afraid to go up against the chip later. I think that that's a hand that the entire table is immediately interested in to see back, right? As soon as the delay catches up, everyone's like, what did they have over there? Yeah, well done for by sure. Trump. I think Chris Frank was thinking, look, he probably wasn't going to raise her too often, but he's like, Jack 10 suited, how do you not raise? Um, he, he probably never expected actually a limp raise in that spot, considering he just had all that momentum. So pretty cool spot. And Limitless decided to open ace four of spades under the gun, even though he's not exactly a big stack. Flop is queen, queen six, nothing for him there. I think that's actually a pretty good flop for pocket eights. I don't see Villamarine folding to a single bet here. No, perfect, uh, perfect flop, really. No, and Alski's just hoping his opponent has no connection. On this board, usually they will have no connection. That's why you bet so small. <laughs> good. Good uh, if it was a perfect flop, it's an even better turn, right? Because it's very simple. If Limitless had a pair higher than eights, he's going to beat. Having a queen here is incredibly unlikely. Yeah, they they is four here. It's usually not the best hand, but sometimes he's got his opponent has a similar hand, so they can just chop it up somewhere. That's a it's an okay card for ace four. You know, you, you do chop. Well, Villamarine would like to see this just go check, check. I think the 10 is not like a super pleasant card. I think he was feeling quite good about it. Then again, there aren't too many 10s, I guess, that would raise on the gun other than the ace 10 suited. Uh, oh, the maybe jack limitless. 10 suited, you know, that's in there too. But yeah, the two eights better, which is pretty much Hollywood tanking. Like, please don't bet. Don't make something mm -hmm. crazy. Well, it does go check, check on the river, and that means that Villamarine wins a pot of 1.1 million chippies. Limitless loses a few. I think managed to uh, keep it in check. Ace-queen! Ace-queen, but they're drawing that to the set of Adrian Mateus. <laughs> I don't think he's going to play, but he, you're gonna, he's going to flop a four, mate. I'll tell you, Nananoko, if you've learned one thing in all these months, or basically this entire year, you know there's going to be a four in this flop. Why would you not call with ace-queen? Give me that flop. Oh, my God, I feel so rough. I'm going to be tilted for the rest of the evening. <laughs> oh, it's all right, Roddy. We're going to get an opportunity. But the thing is, if, if, if pocket fours doesn't flop a set today, that could have been it. It's possible. This was such a good moment, mate, because nobody had a four. There were like eight other hands out there. There was nobody... a four out there, actually, I saw. I don't remember which guy had it. Right. Right. What? You're, you're gonna go rewind just to find out if there was a four in someone else's hand an irrelevant I, spot yep but we got a relevant spot here because i didn't Rip see it well you're a great poker commentator nananoko take it away talk to me malinowski has trip kings against mr gamble who's got ace jack of diamonds this is all you mate this is my pick having no chance to win his hand versus your pick who's just crushed this flop gamble's gonna see that here and I, well, Malinowski is probably just going to check call, but wow. My, um, my pick's going down. You, did you finish yet? You were right. Phila Marina. Of course, I, I was looking at it. Why would I, like, why would I make that up, Roddy? It's just a random thing for me to bluff about. <laughs> because you're mean to me and my pocket force. That's why you like to shatter my dreams. All right, Mr. Gamble is uh, betting a quarter pot. Ooh. Limitless deciding to go for the raise. I actually think that makes it very easy for Mr. Gamble to just let this one go. I know you don't want to give up everything to a sim single raise, but there's not even a diamond on this flop. So I'd say let's just let it go. One of the things I'd be thinking about too is limitless flatting from the splub line and going for the check raise. And you know, it's flatting a small blind here is quite strong. So you just got to give that respect. And pocket kings, nice. Speaking Ooh. of quite strong, and Thomas Mulocker actually has ace deuce of diamonds, but he's obviously still playing 15, 16 big yeah, blinds. Yeah, but he so might he... rejam. He's aggressive. 
He's yep. just thinking, look, it's limitless. He's got a bigger stack than both of our the blinds. I think he might go for it. Yeah. I mean, it, it would be a little aggro. There are many people who wouldn't jam here. Agree. But we also know that some of the top players do like to jam those suited aces. He is going to go for it. Snap call by Limitless. Can Thomas Mulocker find an ace? So far, he does not. Not a single diamond either. It's an ace and an ace only. Or my $50. That Nananoko <laughs> recommended me to bet are down the drain. Well done, Nananoko. I will definitely trust you with my money more often in the future. That was a great run, mate. A 10 minute sweat. <laughs> hey, but at least he gave it to you, one guy that you put a hundred bucks on, right? Like that that's a good trade. Not not a good that, trade, but it's a better trade than what it could have been. No, absolutely. That is a silver lining. But also, Nanoka, if we didn't bet that $50, he would have still given those chips to Limitless. So that would have been a lot better if you asked me. But all right, I digress. The chip leader who came out guns blazing and opened four hands in a row. Well, he didn't open. He opened three hands in a row and then he uh, raised the fourth hand. Now has pocket kings. While Mr. Gamble actually has a real hand on the big blind. I'm a little bit worried here for Mr. Gamble. I hope he doesn't get too out of line. No, he probably would just call here from the big blind. Other positions, though, he probably would throw in a three band, lose extra. Um, look, what did I say when you asked me to pick someone? I said the chip leader, Chris Frank. He's crushing lately. Didn't you change my mind? So, you know what? I was like, you know what? How can I lose Roddy $50 as fast as possible? I was like, it's got to be Thomas Mulocker. <laughs> You're right. He's just going to go for it. So, you had a chance. It's gone. It's, it's all right, though. What I do like. Like, even though it was 50 bucks that expired real quick, at least Thomas Mulocker showed us that he was here to win it. He was not here to finish eight or seven plays because if you then put 50 bucks in someone, I think that really sucks. This would have been a really good play against many different openings that Limitless would have. It's just unfortunate that Limitless had kings this time. So, yeah, those 50 bucks were short lived as Kring Frank just takes down another one. My goodness, this man has won 70% of the hands at this point. I'm okay with losing these 50 bucks, Nanaka. All right. But, you know, Thomas Mulocker, he hasn't had his chance to show, like, one of those top scores, but his play um, shows that he's capable of it. I would love to... We're going to see him again. I think uh, maybe by the end of the year, he's going to win one of this, Roddy. I don't know. That's my vibes. I'm glad you're having those vibes. I remember that you were questioning me every single week if Limitless was ever going to make a final table. And I was like, yes, Nananoko, yes. And then he didn't just make a final table. He got second place. Then he won it a bit later. And now he's at the final table of our anniversary edition. Uh, has to be a little careful here as he's opening up King-10 offsuit under the gun. Judd Trump just calling with Ace-King. And Limitless can be very happy that he didn't flop top pair with a King. Yeah, Jet Trump's like, well, I mean, like, they're pretty deep, like 55 big blinds or so, at least. Um, so I think he was like, I don't actually want to get in against the under gun right now. Um, mm -hmm. Big pay jumps. Seems fine. All right, Nana Noka, obviously, Joe Trump is just going to win this hand. Limitless doesn't really have a way to win it. I've got a question that I already know is going to trigger you. Have you <laughs> been watching the European Championships of football so far? No. I actually was going to ask you last week, why didn't you talk about the Euros? I've thought about that, right? Because you mentioned it two weeks ago, didn't you? Not just yes. last week. So, no, I I don't know who's winning the tour. Is it a tournament? I have no idea how it works. Like, do you just oh, play one game? God. Do you play best of seven? I have no idea. <laughs> best of seven, man. Do you think football became an American sport at this point? How the hell are they going to do that? <laughs> No, the way that they do it is that they have multiple groups with four teams and then there will be a 16 team single elimination bracket and we are currently in the group stage. Most countries after tonight, actually every single country has played one match. So there is one more game starting in 16 minutes, which is actually arguably the best match of the opening round Germany against France. And then everybody has played one game. Is China in the rear? And that wouldn't make sense. The Euros only what 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 you're serious nananoko <laughs> not anymore well, actually the way you <laughs> reacted i was thinking there is but no all That's right confused. in your defense 
there are technically South American championships and every now and then they randomly invite Japan, South Korea or Mexico or USA to participate in their little South American continental championship. Uh, but no, the Euros have never done that and probably never will because Europe is actually very stacked. So no, China does not participate in the <laughs> European championships of football. As Mr. Anderson makes the call here, Villamarine with the three bet of Ace Eight Diamonds and Mr. Gamble makes the call with 9-10 of spades, and it's the good old deuce-deuce four-flop. Yeah. It's like you, you're you like, hmm, should I defend this? Like, all right, I'll come to play a little bit. Literally the worst flop you can get because the three better always see bets, and you just can never float. You can never do anything whenever you have those suited connectors on those kind of boards. It is really nice there, though. We didn't really talk about it now, but that Villa Marine does go for that little C bet because that little C bet of three big blinds just takes it down immediately. If he checks, there is a chance that Mr. Gamble is the one who bets first, and then Villa Marine may feel like he is forced to fold. So I, I do like it. I'm a big fan of the C bets on the weird boards. Yeah, for sure. Um, my pick is down to four million. I'm just saying. So my bad. Mate. It's, it's I'm Mr. Sorry. Gamble. Why are you doubting Mr. Gamble? I'm not doubting him, but like I hope I don't want to curse no more anymore for this year, this uh, series. You know, just I want to see him do good. <laughs> That's very funny. That sounded like a famous uh, pop song a long time ago, where the lady sing, "I don't want to hurt no more." And now we've got <laughs> Nana Noka saying that he doesn't want to curse no more. Obviously, by the way, guys, Thomas Mulecker was eliminated in ninth place, which did mean he walked away with a little over a hundred thousand dollars. Next payout is $158,000. As you guys can see, payouts are obviously a bit bigger for this one. I believe it was a $5 million guaranteed total price pool, $5,670,000. See Judd Trump here. He see bet flop check turn. Uh, it'd be kind of weird for him to just all of a sudden start betting. Bet check bet. So he does it. Makes sense. All right, Chris takes it down. Now, the reason I mentioned the Euros is I know that you're not a really a sports fan or a big football fan. So we're going to take a look around the table. There is an ace queen for Joe Trump. Uh, is that you mentioned Patrick Leonard a couple of times, right? And he's also participated in our high roller super millions. He is so into the whole sports betting. And he's like just posting nonstop Instagram stories. And I really like his, uh, just his enthusiasm and the nonstop post. And he's like asking his community, all right, what are we going to bet, guys? And it's actually been really fun to follow him. I already liked following him for poker, but I feel like it just became 10 times more fun since the man is literally betting on every game. Even though he says he's not, he's like, we're going to stay away from that. And he's like, never mind. The prize was too good. And then he still gets into it. It's uh, It's been cool. But to does he actually through. know what he's talking about? Or is he just a fan yeah, yeah. just betting for funds? No, I uh, I mean, obviously at the end of the day, it is sports betting. But he, it seems like he's putting in a lot of effort. In his spare time, he's been watching games of North Macedonia. Let me tell you, Nananoka, you're going to have to pay me to watch games of North Macedonia. Okay, they are not the most attractive football team, so... He's been putting in the work. So he's basically trying to see, are these guys legit or not? And mm -hmm. see if they've got an edge or whatever it's it is. It's like studying, right? Like a lot of people, I saw Jay Nenders doing a little uh, review PLO session today on his stream. He said, I just lost $10,000. Come and find out how we did it. And then he went over all the spots that he found himself in. And yeah, that's basically what some sports bettors do too. They watch a lot of old games just to see if they can pick up on something that the odds may not totally uh, reflect. Interesting. All right. Well, let's get back to poker. Something I know about. <laughs> questionable, no, 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 go about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's questionable on whether you know whether the odds are real or not. Because pocket fours never makes a set. It's just true. <laughs> never. Well, let's see if pocket tens can. So far, they cannot. But pocket tens is still the best hand here for Joe Trump. Chris Frank is going to go for a little C bet. I'd be surprised to see Joe Trump fold here. Only a single over. He's got the 10 of spades as well. Uh, well, the 10 of spades became a pretty sexy card because he now actually has a straight flush draw. Yeah. Chris Frank picks up a straight draw, thinking about betting again. And to be fair, he probably could get his opponent fold a lot of turns like that would call from the big blind. So he is going to go one more. Like... Yeah, it's but... hard to call here of two tens too. It's it's tough. It is hard. It is a 
bet a little over five big blinds, but it's a chip leader, mate. This guy has been opening everything. He's obviously been betting. He's got 44% VPIP. We've got a straight flush draw on Nenonoko. In no universe are we drawing that. I I think that he's going to make the call. Yeah, but like, yeah, Ooh. he does lay it down. He's just like, maybe I hit my spade, but I lose more chips. Like, it's not like yeah, an open, course. if it was open-ended, then he probably would yeah. call because, you know, he got some more straight outs and stuff like this. But, mm -hmm. you know, he's a little worried about the, the chip leader, right? Because you know, earlier when you were telling, asking him about the Euros, you know, he folded ace queen to a three bet uh, of the chip leader too. So he's... um. He's selectively battling him, right? Because he did limbry raise him, but he's he doesn't mm -hmm. want to get too crazy. He's out of position throughout the whole tournament. He just folded ace queen pre flop, not uh, the ace queen fold we've seen before. The one where he he raised. Then you start to talk about the euros, and Chris Frank actually three bet him with queen ten suited um, during that whole conversation. So, oh wow! And it got him to fold pre flop. Yeah, it got him to fold pre flop. So that's what I'm saying is Judd Trump is. He made the play at the very beginning, right? The ace nine suited, but he's still going to play cautious, and that makes me think that Chris Frank's seat draw is a is a very good good choice, and he's really he's firing away, man. Well, the last spot was close. Was obviously a difficult call. I feel like this one we just have to call. We've got top pair. We've got the queen as a kicker. We've got a gut shot too. I I feel like if we're gonna fold here, like I know it's gonna be uh, annoying. There's a lot of annoying river cards, but. Folding here is almost unacceptable, right? I agree. He's not going to fold here. It's also blind versus blind limp. I think he's just trying to like scare his opponent a bit. The clubs get there. Yeah. If Chris Frank wants to fire again, it would be credible though. Cause... Mm -hmm. But I think for it to work, he needs to bet real big. He needs to he bet needs bigger to... than the pot. Because I think anything below pot size, I think Jotram make calls. But Chris is actually going to give up. He just lets it go. So Jotram does win a pot of 2.4 million chips and chips all the way up to 9 million. Well done. And then we just send limitless pocket kings again. Didn't he already get these earlier and won yes, a lot of did. chips? <laughs> yeah, he knocked out uh, Thomas Mulocker with pocket kings. Oh, yeah. but, um, oh, 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 You know, Judd oh. Trump, he, he's... Did he just flap 5-4 suited in the small blind and flop a straight? Uh, yep. That never happens. No, yeah. well, that, that happens sometimes, apparently, and this is one of these moments. Now, the good news is that it wasn't do, do, Deuce 3 6, because I think if it's Deuce 3 6, Limitless is going to lose a lot of chips. I think the ace is very unpleasant. That is once more such a big bet. Chris Frank is really going for big bets, right? He's putting these guys to the test. Limitless with the snap fold there does not want to continue, probably expects his opponent to have an ace quite often. I was about to didn't have the ace, but they flopped the nuts. Wow. Yeah, no, um, great read. Uh, I think it's because he flatted from the small blind. When you flat from the small blind, your range is quite strong, actually. It, he actually didn't think his opponent ever had 5-4 suited. So if he's flatting 5-4 suited there, then, you know, he's probably flatting some hands that just whiff too. So interesting. Mm-hmm. You see how quick he folded as well. Like, I know it's kings and there is an ace on the board, but that was a quick fold by Limitless. He's not here to waste or, uh, waste time or stall. He's just like, nope, I'm beat. Snap folded. Like, he looked at it and he didn't even treat them like kings. <laughs> yeah, and it's also because this guy just showed down a bl like a bluff last hand too. He's like, no, I'm going with my read. Well, sick read. Limitless maintains the stack that he currently has, 6 million chips. Plenty to work with. Queen three against a three. Very hard for Chris to do anything here. Chris, obviously a tight player. It's funny as well how we saw in the hand history, it felt that Enrico was the crazy one. But apparently after Enrico lost all his chippies, he hasn't really played a whole lot of hands lately. And he's sitting at 4% VPIP as we speak. Yeah, I mean, when, you, yeah, when you're yeah, when you short stack, your hands are tied because uh, you might make a move like Thomas, Thomas Mulocker, but then you're no longer in the tournament. So you just got to chill a bit. So who do you got tonight, then and Oko, France or Germany? If I had a pick between the two, um, I don't know. I like I like baguettes and croissants, so I I choose France, I guess. <laughs> I choose France too, mate. Don't what did you? I have no idea who's the favorite though, or whatever. It's, do you it's put pretty any money even. down when you play? When you watch? Yeah, yeah, of course. I uh, I love sports betting. 
I mean, if I'm betting on the final table and listening to your <laughs> advice, of course I'm betting on the Euros, Nenonoko. Come on. Now. You should ask for my advice for the Euros. I'll be like, I just yeah, did. I like that France, is, yeah. France it is, mate. We're sending it. <laughs> no, I was, I was going to bet on France anyway. I had a good feeling. It's very even because Germany and France are both strong football nations. Let's see if Mr. Gamble decides to defend his big blind with Jack Seven of Clubs. He does. Chris does not flop a straight this time, but does flop a backdoor flush roll that we know is no good. He doesn't know that. And two overs. Mr. Gamble is uh, he's back. bleeding now. Damn it. Chris Frank is the Austrian Romashka. I've got to figure it out. He <laughs> bets in 0.1 right. second and he bets real big every single hand too. He raises like instantly to preflop. He's, he's fast. I, that's what you like to see, right? You think someone who doesn't normally play 10K plays a little bit slower. Um, but this is a professional plane and he just knows what he wants to do. It's Romashka. He's moved. He's turned his name into Frank and he moved to Austria. <laughs> Chris Putz is going to open up Ace Jack of Clubs. Mr. Gamble had Ace Four Offsuit. Adrian Mateus is King Four of Diamonds. Uh, I think Big Blind he would defend. Let's see what Mateus Joe Trump... also hasn't played a hand, I believe, right? No. Maybe he's a little terrified of what happened the last time he's made it to a final table. Actually, no, I think he won it back then, so that's. <laughs> He's like, you know what? Let's not throw away all the chippies. Limitless has definitely been getting his feet wet. Uh, has been opening a lot from the early positions and apparently not afraid to battle it out with the chip leader. Off players flop a pair of jacks. Obviously, the jack of Limitless is better. Are you still here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You froze. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I'm just watching. I'm here, I'm here. You were watching yeah, so intensely like that I actually, froze. I actually thought that your uh, your camera froze. <laughs> I was like, oh no, I lost Nano again. Go ahead, mate. No, I was just, uh, I didn't have much to say. I just <laughs> said pretty much it, Roddy. All right, I'm gonna go check check on the turn. There's a good chance that this will go. I actually kind of feel that Limitless might go for a very tiny bet, but it's so risky to bet, right? Because if your opponent raises you, you feel pretty disgusted. It's a very read-dependent um, move. Um, I think he, he... It's the standards to check, but if he really thinks about it, this chip leader, he probably will value bet a king himself, right? Yeah. Just the way he's been playing. Um, he is going to check to be safe just in case, mm -hmm. but I can definitely see betting being reasonable. Yep, hoping that you get called by a uh, check 10 or a queen check. But then again, like we've seen some one of those hand here, so some guy min bets out and then he just pops it up later. So just in case, let's just avoid yeah. that altogether. No, I, I like it from Limitless. I think it makes perfect sense. But you can see that for the first time, he actually took more than a few seconds. Uh, it felt that he kind of knew he was good, but then he's like, ah, I don't want to take the risk. Mr. Gamble decides to open a six of clubs and Chris Frank is like, that's nice and all mate, but I've got ace king offsuit. So if you want to play your hand, we're going to play for all the chippies. Mr. Gamble lets it go. And Chris is just, he's flying, man. He entered this final table with 13 million chips. He's now up to 17 million. Yeah. And he, it's not just from winning some hand. He's just. He's just in every hand right now. Like he's got 50% V pip. Mr. Anderson plays hands and loses every single pot. He's down to 20 big blinds. Just awful. Yeah. But I'm, I'm still not too worried. As long as he's not like below eight big blinds, I think he's going to be okay, mate. Chris takes down another one. 52% V pip and running hot. As you guys can see, the hottest emoji there. Actually, no. Where's the flame? Uh oh. Pocket four. Well, look at these hands. The last four hands, man. They're just, they get better as you go. You start ace jack suited. Start ace queen suited. It is the best. Pocket fours in a big blind. <laughs> I love it, Nenonoko. Yes. Uh, it's a perfect staircase there, guys. Ace jack, ace queen, ace king. Chris is going to fall the best hand because Chris is a bit new to the high roller superference. So he doesn't know that he doesn't have pocket fours here, but what he actually has is a set. He's going to let go. I don't think we're going to see a flop though because Limitless could just go all in. Yeah, he probably will. He's going to put a ton of chips in. Like, 
Hey, Chris Press, he sees a he sees a cold four bet. He's holding pocket fours. I don't know. That's a read. That's a sign to me. I think I would go with it. Limitless does go for the four bet. I hope the Villa Marine calls just so I can show you guys that pocket fours do indeed always flop a set. This is it as well. I didn't see the rest of the table, but I don't think anyone had a four. This is a gnarly spot, right? With ace queen of diamonds. You're like, oh, Limitless has been so, pretty so active annoying. so far. Most guys are like, you know what? Sigh, fold. But if sometimes yeah. if you're suspicious, you just see a flop and like, okay, my hand's too pretty and suited. This is a reasonable spot for Limitless to consider cold four betting. Uh, but like we haven't seen too much cold four bet bluffs in general. So like, mm -hmm. but then when you're up against the end boss, you think he's making some moves on you sometimes, right? You just convince yourself and you just lose more chips than you should have. Let's see what it's going to be. Philomarine is in the tank. We'd love to see a flop. Can they please rub it on? Ay, ay, ay. No flop. Good fall, though. I mean, memes inside, guys. It's an excellent fault by Carlos Villamarine. Uh, ace queen offsuit. We can be like, maybe just let it go. But, you know, that, that beautiful ace queen of diamonds, it's a little harder to fold that one. But very well done. Good read on the situation. Yeah. It was, it's just so annoying. Like, he's like, should I really try to see a flop here? I was like, nah. Enrico, ace three of diamonds, similar to Thomas Mulocker hand. A little bit different positions. Let's see what he wants to do. Jammy would work. And it will work. He does go for the jam. <laughs> and he's giving us a Dan Bilzerian emoji. Well, I know you're already a fan. Have you seen all of them by now, Nananoka? I I've seen a lot of them, yeah. But uh, they they're pretty. they're really well done. I mean, I, like I told you in the beginning when you first talked about it, I was like, wow, I didn't expect them to make some Dan Bilzerian emojis, right? But like, there's got to be a new person eventually, I assume. I, uh, I'm waiting for my Sasha emotes. Oh my goodness, mate. In the Beat the Pros on Sunday, I had Sasha at my table for the entire first hour. And Sasha, he's always bantering with me. And she's like, Roddy, give me some videos. So I started making some snap cam videos and the entire table was laughing. And she would just nonstop three bet, four bet me. And it was so annoying, mate. I actually sent her a message on Instagram after one hour. I was like, my goodness, Sasha, why are you so annoying to play with? And she's like, I'm sorry, you just fell too much. And I was like, oh, because <laughs> we were both actually had a big stack because I doubled up early and see tripled up or something because Sasha always gets in the mix. But it's fun, guys. The Beat the Pros happens every Saturday around 6 p.m. No, 7 p.m. Central European Summertime. A lot of your favorite GG ambassadors and squad members participate in it. If you knock any of us out, you also get free entrance into a $5,000 free roll that happens a week later. Cool, Tony. Mateos' uh, first pot here, pocket tens. Nice. Take take it down. Don't have to play a lot of hands, mate. It's better not to play too many hands and maintain your stack. I actually can see some fireworks here because I feel like Chris Frank, yeah, like if Adrian Mateus folds, which I don't, yes, he does. I actually think that Chris Frank is going to three bet his 9 8. Well, he's not folding. He's just going to call, but like still. Could be fireworks depending on the type of flop. This one is a little fireworky. Perhaps even more of that three was the three of spades, or that seven was the seven of spades. But safe to say that Chris Frank is not going anywhere. Yeah. Well, he's going to see a check. Uh, he th might just go for it, right? He's got an open in the straight draw. Sees a check. Seems weak. I think Chris Frank loses a lot of chips here, man. I think he's going to just put his opponent like an ace king or ace queen with a heart. So they check the mm -hmm. flop, call it a turn. And a lot of times you got to keep firing if you bet this turn. When you say he's going to lose a lot of, off. when you say he's going to lose a lot of chips, why do I just know that the river is going to be, a, <laughs> I want to say a jack or a six. It's not quite, but it is another heart. That is obviously a very annoying card for Joe Trump. I feel like Chris Frank doesn't have a 25 or 33% button, by the way. It's check or 75%. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is. Goes check, check on the river, and Joe Trump will receive the good news that his opponent had no heart. Yeah, no heart to bet as well, right? <laughs> but um, the thing is, if his read was to kind of go for two spots, right? 
and then the heart rolls off you're like oh man he's probably got ace queen ace king there way too often so that's why he didn't fire had he seen his opponent's hand he definitely would have fired right like it'd be impossible for his opponent to call um you just don't want you don't want to go into a hand with a game plan and change it midway just because it favors your situation so here we go limitless decides to defend the big blind with 10 8 of spades and that's obviously not the flop that Mateus was looking for. Don't think Limitless is folding here. Flop mid pair. Spades is still alive. Couple back to a straight rolls. And that is a lovely turn card. There's obviously a chance that the 10 is good, which we know it is. I don't yeah. see Adrian betting here again. No, he's going to try to show down these two nines. Hope he's up against like a king high or like a 7 8. Just hope for the best. I feel like this was just going to get worse and worse for nights. <laughs> he's like, he's like, man, the, the 10 and the ace are already annoying. Now you roll off a queen as well. He's like, what do I beat? King Jack? No, never mind. That makes a straight. He's like, I don't beat anything. <laughs> do you, have, yeah. you have Jack 9 mates? Like, no, I blocked Jack 9. So it's like, all right. Yeah, I think Adrian Mateus beat. knows he needs to bet to win this. Uh, he's going to give up, though. So the thing is, is, like, I need to bet to win it, but will they fold is the question. 10-8? Probably would have folded, but he could have been up against like the ace five, ace sixes that don't really go for value. Mm -hmm. This time it's Chris on the big blind with pocket nines. Be careful, Limitless. I know Limitless is going to raise a lot because I think he thinks that Chris is tight. Chris obviously hasn't played too many hands and doesn't have a monster stack. But that doesn't mean you can just take every blind from him. There you go. I don't think he would do this against every other player. We know Limitless is aggressive. But this is clearly a thing that's happening already. Yeah, I agree. Um, two nines here, though, has to jam. This is mandatory. <laughs> Big stack raising into you. You got two nines. What else are you going to do? Well done. Seven deuce. Show. Nice, Chris. <laughs> that is almost 40 big blinds that he jammed. What's well, not? The big blind's 160K. He's got 30 big blinds now. How the hell did he jam 40 okay. big blinds, Roddy? All right. It's over 20 big blinds. No, okay, it makes sense. Miscalculation with the uh, with the big blinds there. Do you need... Oh, here's your level, the 200k thank level. Thank you, thank you, Nananoka. <laughs> all right, he's up 23 big blinds. There you go, mate. You are, out of all the people out there, you are not one to make fun of anyone's math. On top of that, you just wondered if China was participating in a European championship. So don't you dare to make me look like the dummy tonight. No, I, I just derp. I blame it on having football open. Nah, it makes sense. But it's still a little bit scary. Like, yeah, it's mandatory, but it's your heart skips a beat when you do it, I think. Oh, of course. Your heart always skips a beat. You, you know what you're always rooting for? No snap call, no snap call, no snap call. Yeah. Now just fold, just fold, just fold. <laughs> um, Check. All right. So Chris Frank didn't do his... If he auto C bet like he was doing, really, playing really quickly, he would have won his pot. But now he's given up and lost the pot. By the way, your bet looking real good. A limitless like, bet. Yeah, limitless bet looking really good. And yeah, and your final take. Are you really gonna pick the winner on the anniversary, Roddy? I'm, like, I've been owning you for the last twenty weeks, so that would not be shocking at this point. But why? Why are you doing this? Like, first you <laughs> say I don't want to curse no more, and now you are congratulations. <laughs> limitless while he's literally like third in chips okay after that hand, he's second in chips but there are eight people left mate what are you doing well but mr gambo is back he's got ace queen here it, thank you because like he's had six million chips he's lost every single pot trying to get involved the dream scenario domination yep you think chris always calls though mm -hmm. No, I don't think he always calls, but he should. I don't think he's going to call. He should call, right? So what, how many blinds is he jamming? 12? He's the shortest stack his opponent, who's most desperate. Um, yeah. I guess you will call and just pray that you're up against a smaller power, an ace jack maybe as well, or an ace 10. But he receives the bad news that it's ace queen. Now he needs a queen, actually. Oh, picks up some extra outs. A queen or a nine for Chris. No queen, no nine on the river. And... Mr. Gamble gets the full double. The king is safe. He does get the full double. It's us with the few. I uh, I love the neutral few, actually. Out of all the fews, that's definitely the best few. 
that's actually like the perfect time to use it too, right? Like you, yep. you survive when they had some Mate, decent outs. You are not surprised that Mr. Gamble's emote game is on point, right? Like obviously he's familiar with the emote meta. He's been entertaining us throughout the entire year. He knows when to use emotes. Like there are people who win the all in and then they spam like my last hand Wait, after Roddy. they've already won it. And maybe, like, what? maybe some action here, right? Queen Jack suited, pocket nines in a small blind. Depends on if Chris Chris is going for it. I mean, Joe Trumps does still have Chris Frank behind him. Yeah, but this is like a mandatory call. This guy's well, jamming 10 big blinds. Oh my, this is a flop. <laughs> yep, it's a flop and a half. Chris needs a queen jack or a diamond. And Joe ja Trump is hoping for uh, the run out of 3-3 three, three or a deuce-deuce. Obviously, aces are safe too, but does give Chris even more outs. I don't know if Chris was looking at a different table, but this is our final table, mate. No one else is going to bust. There's oh. the queen immediately on the turn, though. To be fair, he did have a million outs. Queen is good. King doesn't change anything. Chris stays alive. And Judd ja Trump loses a few hands. We got the animated Dan Bilzerian. I mean, it's cool, but I like the neutral of you. Like, that's actually the best one. Yeah, I like it too. It's just like, um, this is the face. It's perfect. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, bye bye, All Chris right. Frank. Well, seven six of hearts is a beautiful hand, but Villa Marine with the snap call does have an open end there or a double gut, I need to say eight or a four. An eight or a four, Chris. Oh, that's oh, oh my so. god, that's scary because that was a lot of pips. You're like, oh don't do this. But Villa Marine does get the full double, and that means that we don't have a dominant ship leader anymore. Yeah, yeah. Oh my oh. God, Judge Trump! He, 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 he's in trouble. He is he's in getting... a lot of trouble. Queens on the cutoff, and Limitless has aces. This does bring me back to that one final table where, even though Limitless played great, he did get kings and aces over and over again. You remember that? <laughs> Dude, he's going to be our massive chip leader too. Limitless. Oh my Nana, God! Stop, Nedanoka! Can you stop? Like the hand hasn't even been played yet. What do, you, what do you mean? Like, how can... Yeah, okay, no, you're right. Nobody in the history of this game has ever won with queens against aces, Nananoko. It's, it's literally impossible, right? Never. It's not possible. Wow, this is such a sick spot too, right? It is. Uh... Especially with the extra money from Villamarine, because Villamarine decides to make a call. He's like, you know what? Let's just see a flop. Limitless is not going to do anything well this time, right? Because we both have a lot of chips. Wrong. So sick, man. This is just so sick for Judge Trump. Dude came in in second place. And Rico, last hand, already waved goodbye to Chris, hoping to secure a pay jump. Did not get his pay jump. This time he might get it. Yeah, very even sex too, right? Uh, a little bit of difference, this? but wow. It's just nothing you can do but jam these two queens. You just have the best hand way too often. Mm-hmm. Did you say that, by the way? I busted queens in the beat the pros last Saturday. <laughs> Thank you, Nenanaka. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Trump is taking his time. We have seen him make some conservative folds, but folding. We've seen people fold jacks pre-flop. This would maybe be a moment where you could consider folding jacks, even though I wouldn't like it. But folding queens would be criminal, and I don't think Joe Trump is going to do it. Yeah. I don't think he's folding. I think he's just wondering, can he potentially just call and see if a safe flop and then get it in or something, you know? It's a, something to consider. I don't think it's unreasonable. But if you but, think you got fold equity pre-flop, you got to just go for it now. But if he calls, he also brings Villamarine along because then Villamarine is closing the action and it's 1.3 million extra to play for a 7 million chip pot. Yeah, that's definitely true too. Um, he's really taking. Is he really gonna fold, Roddy? That is insane. If he does, Ooh. if he had pocket eights, would he fold? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Queens fold, but eights, I'm in. Um, I still don't think he can fold this hand. No, nah. like it's brutal. <laughs> it's disgusting. But I don't think you can fold. You gotta keep in mind too, the short stack. 
just calls and hits a queen, Roddy. He hit a queen. Yes, I know he hit a queen, Ananoko. That's after you said he was eliminated because he couldn't <laughs> possibly win the hand. It's good to see some things never change. But you know what? We've seen this before. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. Michael Adama and Milocker had the same thing. Queens versus aces and the river was an ace. The same right. flop too. So it's not over yet. It is not over yet, but it's definitely looking pretty bad for Limitless. The five of space doesn't really change anything. Six million ships in the middle. What do you think Limitless is thinking about right now? He's thinking this guy's got ace, queen, king, queen, 100%. Maybe he's got pocket kings or something. Like He's gonna. St he's thinking, I'm going to stack them. He's not, he's not worried. The, all the chips are going in no matter what, unless he bets the turn and the river is the case queen. That's like the only card that could save Limitless, besides, of course, the ace. I, I feel like with the way that this hand... No, never mind. 1.3 million chippies is the battle of limitless and we're glad to gonna see a call uh the four doesn't really change too much sure ace three we've seen people make crazy plays with ace threes but this is not really a moment after a raise and a call of course so i don't think nah. that's really something you have to worry about he puts his opponent on ace queen king queen pretty much all the time he doesn't think his opponent would call with pocket sevens or deuces pre-flop. Bye. Sorry. Oh, my God. Emoji call. Judd Trump wins a pot of 14.6 million chips. And Limitless, if I was you, I'd send an angry DM to Nanonoko. Because <laughs> <laughs> you really bend the universe in your mysterious ways, mate. I did not see that. Oh, you know what I was actually thinking all the time was I was about to make a speech about how this guy, he didn't get ninth place. You told me he wouldn't get ninth again, but he got eighth, which is pretty darn close because he was on pace. Wow, he actually would have got eighth place. It's really sick, Roddy. Yep. He, he would have. <laughs> he would have, Nanonoko. Instead, my pick and my $100 bet is in shambles. Uh, still wow. 12 big lines for Limitless, though. You know, I, I feel like this is where you can see that you live in a country where you don't play too much online poker. Because you just like, you look at the hands, you're like, oh, this hand beats that hand. And then you've got me who's been battling in the streets and has just been getting slaughtered by brutal runouts left, right, and center. And I see aces against queens, and that's a coin flip, mate. Anyone can <laughs> win it because you don't know how many of those I've lost lately. <laughs> oh, man, that's just brutal. You, I guess you kind of felt like that you just lost another one of those aces versus queens because since you have the hundred bucks on it and it's your pick and Pretty it's the much. anniversary, it's brutal. I'm like, all right, guys, just another day at the office. Don't worry, Roddy, keep getting it in good. One day your luck will change. Yeah. And one day Nananoka will stop calling hands before they're over. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Dan, I don't know if you read Daniel Underground News' latest tweet, but he says he's been getting in bad, running bad. Sounds like your I story, but you, you eventually it'll come, he says. But your, he your had, question he, is when. He had that little tweet where he's like, oh, I got kings against like Ace Jack and then Aces against Queens. And I mentioned lose all three. I'm steaming at this point. I saw it. <laughs> Chris Frank opened up Ace Queen of Spades under the gun and flops. I mean, technically ace high, but it's safe to say he flops the world. He's got the nut flush throw and a gutter ball. But um, this last 15 minutes has been wild, okay? Like, obviously, that hand we just saw was wild, but, you know, Chris Frank snap jammed 25 big blinds, lost 5 billion chips to Villa Marine, right? Hey, those queens held. Just saying. They held. Um, it's been crazy. Was a sweat as well. <laughs> yeah. With the double gutter. I actually got the vibes he was going to get there for some reason, but it didn't happen. That'd be very brutal. That'd be like one of the most brutal ways to go out. And the big stacks just jamming into you. It actually happens quite often too, obviously. And with the amount of hands of online poker that are being played, you're going to see crazy things. That's just the way it is. It'd be weird if the best hands would always win. You know, it's funny how people always say like, online poker is rigged when, you know, there are bad beats. But it'd be way more rigged if the best hand would always win, because that'd be really messed up. And, yeah. uh, since at any given moment, yeah, 
there's like 200 300 000 people online at every given moment people playing multiple tables it's like yes guys we're gonna see some crazy things because it would be literally super crazy to not see those crazy things adrian mateus with his pocket eights here is battling yes. it out with villa marine he took a little stab when he got checked on the flop just hoping his opponent just gives up like a king queen type hand um mateus hasn't played many hands it's always you know it's a funny thing i don't know if you, you probably didn't realize but mateus has played i think three hands he started with pocket tens then he went to pocket nines and now he's on pocket eights staircases yes you sharp tonight nananaka <laughs> lol hey roddy you didn't do one thing though you got to give some props to judd trump for his chip leader you just ignored it i actually did ignore it yes joe trump is now our neil chip leader that's just because i was steaming a little bit because you've just like you keep doing it and it's like it's like if you would do it with guys that i didn't pick or that i didn't put my hundred bucks on i'd be like whatever but and then you even try to argue pre-flop you're like he, he can't possibly win I'm like then noko <laughs> he can he very well may <laughs> <laughs> At least my pick has more chips than your pick. I'll take that. <laughs> All right. I actually, uh, I did have a little bet on Joe Trump. I forgot to mention that. Oh, did you? But, yes, but it was very small. I bet exactly the amount that if he would win, I would break even. So the return payout on my Joe Trump victory would be... $234. I think I bet 34 on him and obviously had a hundred on limitless hundred on Jay Anderson. So I would win 234 if Judd Trump wins. That was my safety bet. That's but now obviously I'm still bad at all. Uh, but now I'm losing $50 regardless because we <laughs> bet on Thomas Mulocker who lasted around nine minutes. Thank you. Nanako. You're on fire tonight. So pretty much you're free rolling now. Like you got chip leader and you got two guys who have small stacks that could run it up. Feels good. No, it feels like a negative free roll. It feels like the best I can do is break even. This is not what I would consider free rolling. Free rolling would be, you know, a, a top three between Judd Trump, wait, wait, Mr. Wait. Gamble. What is it? Ace King? Ace Queen? Short sack and Rico already waved people goodbye twice. <laughs> you don't want to say that because you're going to get called this time, Enrico. See? Mr. Gamble, his emoji meta was on point. This one doesn't make any sense. He's the one going all in and he's like, I want to call. Like, this one is all right. Come on, make sense. Villarine does make the call. Now you can hit us with a so sick or just one time. The man needs to find a queen. Uh, we chop with a four or a jack. A queen to win it. A chop with a jack or a four. Seven of diamonds is no bueno. So Carlos Villamarine will be responsible for the elimination of Enrico. Enrico walks away with $158,000. Obviously a great score, Nanonoko, but I think he looks back at this and he's like, it could have been more, man, because he had like 9 million chips at one point on the Monday night. Yeah, he could have had a, a lot more. I mean, like, obviously this final table, everything was fine, but let's just pause for a second because I feel like more action is coming. Ace-Jack going to jam here, right? 10 bigs? Two chip leaders? Um... Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's actually, it's, it is a great spot. And it's not an easy gem because often Ace Jack doesn't look that sexy, right? With an open and a cold call. But, you know, given the person who has opened, given the person who has called, I actually kind of like it by Limitless. Well done. Yeah, he, he just, if he takes this down pre flop, he wins like 1.3 million chips or something. Chris Frank might be forced to call. I don't know. It's close. Cause, oh, just an overlay now. Mm -hmm. He's flipping with pocket pairs. 1.5 million to potentially win 4.7. But Chris does not make the call. Just from does show limitless that he had an ace. And a dot, 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 I believe. Yeah. Ooh. He gave him chips back. Not too bad. Adrian Mateus gets a walk with Jack 3 offset. That feels like winning a monster pot. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So that top right corner looking real bad. Ace is here. Yep. I love how Chris is meant for so confusing. He's like, why are you giving him a walk? If you would have done that, I would have raced from the button. Uh, well, while he was spamming so confusing, the man finds aces. Hey, in the pre-show, he had aces. He three bet tiny. 
if he was to do consistent three betting sizing here, he'd make it like 900K or like 950. No, he's going to make it. Uh, well, it's kind of weird with his tech size, right? Because he only has 21 big. I think I like this because he almost makes it seem like he's stealing. And obviously, you know, you can look at this and be like, oh, it's kind of a waste because now he gets no action. But with only, basically, what did he have starting ahead? 21 big blinds. If he mm -hmm. makes it like seven big blinds, that looks awfully strong. Yeah, almost like whether he three bets smaller or calls, he looks like he's got aces, which was yeah. the least likely to make. The most likely to not look like aces is actually to fold, obviously not folding aces. So the next least likely to look like aces is to jam there and just hope they put you on like pocket nines or something. Mm -hmm. I feel like he just didn't really have the stack to go for a proper three bet. So you could maybe call, but then there is a good way that you're going to be forced to play a three way pot. And then you're going to see some ugly ass flop and you're like, well, <laughs> maybe this was not the best way to play aces. Uh, I think he made the correct call there, even though he didn't get any action. Adrian, wow, that was already it. Man, these last uh, nine minutes flew by just because we had so many crazy hands. That's going to do it, guys, for the very first hour of this final table coverage of our anniversary edition. It's been a year straight of Nananoko and Roddy on the Tuesday evening. In this break, we have a couple of highlight videos prepared for you guys. And after that, we'll be back with our number two of the High Roller Super Millions, week 52. Hello everybody, Daniel Granu here with some good news from the GG Poker Network. We've been preparing a promotion for the new year called GG Care. As any poker player might know, sometimes you find yourself in what we call unfortunate situations, you know, some ugly bad beats, right? Well, that's where GG Care comes in. GG Care will take care of you with huge prize pools available every day. Let's see how you can get your GG Care benefits. Aces versus kings. Yep, all in before the flop. I mean, nobody's going to fold that, right? That's just a setup. It's a cooler. I can't imagine being, you know, at the final table of the World Series of Poker heads up and this happening to me. It's just brutal. Bad beats should never be a thing, but eh, they are. Thanks, GG. I flopped the top set. Very nice. Some fucking idiot chases a runner runner straight to suck out on me. Unbelievable. But in my darkest moment, GG Care was there. Thanks, GG. Flop the second nut set. The middle set on the flop. It's an impossible cooler. How can you be beat there? The guy has top set. Nobody's folding that. Sometimes it just feels unfair. Thanks, GG. As you can see in the most unfortunate of situations, GG Care will appear for you. Are you curious how to get these benefits? Don't worry. You don't even have to lift a finger. First, Simply enjoy the game as usual. Whenever something unfortunate happens, GG Care will be there. Secondly, when confronted with such circumstances, GG Care automatically will register you into a flip out tournament with a huge prize. Just check the pop up window. Thirdly, take a rest, have yourself a nap, get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your mind of all the bad beats, and when you wake up, the daily GG Care prizes will be waiting for you. That's all there is to GG Care. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just play the game as normal and GG Care will take care of you. And the prize money will only grow more and more in the future. So keep your eyes posted and good luck, everybody. I hope you don't have too many bad beats, but if you do, GG Care will be there. Thanks, GG. Waiting to come back to the final table. Radar holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best.
Welcome back, guys, to the second hour of the High Roller Super Millions Anniversary Edition, where we are ready to continue the poker. We apologize, of course, for the bumpy start we had in the beginning, where Nanonoko had a couple of connection issues, but it seems like we're all good now, and that is the best thing. If you guys missed it in the beginning of the show, GG has now launched their store, ggstore.com, all one word, where you guys can order a couple of cool T-shirts, hoodies, caps, face masks, and in the future, more products will be added. Definitely recommend keeping a close eye on it because I don't know. I think most of the things that Gigi does are pretty cool. As Villa Marine is just jamming 10 deuce of clubs from the small blind. Then a note what a way to kick off our second hour. Yeah, I mean, he's like him and the chip leader have got like the same stack almost. Mateos is just, he had a great stack coming into his final table, didn't he? And just nothing. No, look, Roddy, look. Tens, nines, eights, and now pocket sevens. That's the only hands he's played. So the next hand he's going to play are pocket sixes. That's what you're telling me. At pocket fours is when he stops, though, Roddy. He's just like, oh, nope. Yeah. That's when he wins the tournament. That's what's <laughs> going to happen, mate. Chris in the small blind with jack four. Doesn't want to give the walk. But he's like, ah, no, I don't want to risk it either. So it's Mr. Gamble receives the walk with 7-3, and that feels real good as he's playing a little less than 20 big blinds as we speak. What's funny is, like, it's the the lesser-known guys of all the chips, right? The guy, three guys on the left, whereas in the superstars, Anderson, Mateos, Malinowski, they've got no chips. I mean, you said uh, Mateus came in with 8 million chips. He's at 5.6 now. So, yeah, he lost a little, but I don't think it's been a total disaster for him. He's clearly having a rather tight approach tonight. Obviously, the pay jumps are big. I, I mean, whenever you're sitting on 20-something big blinds and you came in near the top, you, you never feel too good because you know you're, like, easily at risk soon. This guy just flopped the straight on him. <laughs> the nut straight as well. Poor Mateus flops bottom pair as a queen. He's like, you know what? Well, it's not much, but it's something. I'm going to continue. All right. Maybe that disaster that you mentioned. He should have only played pocket sixes. What's happening, sure. Mateus? This is what we get. <laughs> uh, well, Roddy, I told you you're free rolling today. Chip leader getting even more chips. You and I have a very different understanding of what a free roll is. <laughs> <laughs> Mateus is wondering what he should do with his pair of eights and the gut shot. We know that he's in all sorts of trouble. He's like, damn it, I've been pretty tired. Why is this guy not giving me any respect? Well, that's because he's sitting on the nuts. <laughs> he got a little greedy there. He went for an overbet against a guy who's got like too much pressure on him in this situation. So Limitless is currently our shortest stack. But he does still have a little over 10 big blinds. Well, I, I'm not giving up yet. I feel uh, he's been playing very well. Let's not forget how quickly he folded those kings when Chris Frank actually flopped the nuts. Speaking of the nuts, not quite, but flopping two pair with seven, eight is obviously not too shabby. Another eight would be disastrous for Joe Trump. I mean, it's pretty hard to know. He's still going to lose some chips here, right? Because he's up against a guy who's pretty aggressive. And it's really obvious. So I still think at least, at least another bet's going in. Could be a third. It's a bet that's a little shy of three big blinds. Chris makes the call. I think at this uh, point, Judd Trump is not feeling too good about his king eight offset. Yeah, but he doesn't feel terrible. He's, I mean, it's got a lot of showdown value. He's thinking about block betting, I think. So another 600k, 650, 700. Well, he's going to check, but Chris Frank's not going to check two pairs off his image. Nope. Also holds a club. Makes it a bit less likely that Judd Trump has a flush. He's going to bet 1.8 million. Judd Trump will snap fold his eight. So he knew he, I think he felt pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he that was a quick, that was the quickest photo I've seen in a long time. He's just like, if it's this many digits, now I'm going to think about it. 
A little while ago, we saw Chris Frank jamming 15 million chips into the 7 million of Villamarine. Got called by Queens. He's like, all right, we're not going to do that anymore. Yeah. And he flops I kinda, good. I mean, that first hour was pretty fun. It was pretty exciting. But I, a part of me kind of misses the Chris Frank with like fifth, the chip leader because he was he's crazy, right? But now it's like, uh, usually people change up a little bit, right? When they're no longer a chip lead. This is a lovely flop, though, for 6-5. Flopped a pair in a gut shot. The 9 obviously doesn't help him. <laughs> that feels like a horrible run out where you're like, oh, man, I think I flopped pretty good. Still has the best hand. It will go check, check on the river. Phil Marine wants to see if his ace high is good. The answer is it's not. But Chris does win. Pretty decent pot, to be honest. I mean, the pots are just getting so big because the big blind is as big as it is already. Obviously, it's a slightly different dynamic and format than we normally have because this was a multiple day event. Is this it for Limitless? I mean, to be fair, we probably should be reasonably deep amongst all the players, but like three guys has all the chips. So it's just making other guys seem so much more shallow. Mm -hmm. Really ugly flop for Limitless. He does have the ace of clubs, but that was not what he was hoping for. You think if he jams... Free flop, you think that uh, Judd Trump calls with King 10 off? No, I don't think, don't think so. Because if he didn't call earlier with Ace 8 suited for 10 big blinds, there's no reason he'd call King 10 off. Yeah, but that was a different one because there was still Chris Frank behind him to act. And I think that changes everything. Yeah, but nah, he wouldn't call. Because Judd Trump, like, he makes his plays, but he's really solid from what I've noticed. Mm hmm. Aces. Adrian Mateus decided not to play pocket sixes. He's going to play pocket aces instead, but this is going to look like a strong open because Adrian has not opened under the gun at all. The entire table snap he's... folds. Nobody really had anything. This kind of stuff he's... does suck if you're Adrian, right? You're like, oh, come on, man. You're always like praying for stuff, right? And then like yeah. the folds is not ever what you want to see. He's played like only pocket pairs, literally. Especially when they fold that fast. It wasn't even that like somebody was thinking about making a move. Nope. He blinked and it was onto the big blind already. And he's like, come on. The big blind doesn't even have any chips. Adrian Mateus does flop top area with his king jack of diamonds. Pretty good. I'd like to see him bet here. Maybe we can go for uh, 525. Feels like a yeah. nice size. No, not quite, but you know, it's all right. I don't think he's going to get looked up. But uh, what, what what kind of pay jumps are we at right now, Roddy? Well, the next play that gets eliminated walks away with $205,000. And obviously after that, it goes up real quick. We are currently looking at the odds. There was extra money, by the way, being put on Joe Trump. A lot of extra money, actually, because it was 888 at our graphic. Apparently, the... Final standing was around 1,600, I believe, if I can read those numbers correctly. So they almost doubled the money. A lot of people decided to put some last-minute money on Joe Trump. So what place does Anderson need to get? Fifth or better, I believe, yep. for all-time yep. money? Yep. For, to become the winningest player of the High Roller Super Millions, Mr. Gamble, Jay Anderson, needs a fifth place or better to overtake Nicholas Ostet. Who did make it in the money, by the way? In case you guys are wondering, where is Nicholas? Isn't he here every week? Uh, almost, <laughs> almost. But this time, uh, I believe he had a min cash, but that was it. I was looking at the before day two started, and I saw a Damo at the top. I was like, oh, I'm excited. I, was, I opened the file table. I'm like to see who made it. I'm like, I'm ex hopefully he's there, right? Dude got like what 38th or something like it's not even that far because there's only like 60 runners in day two. I was like, what? He must have just punted it off or something. I don't know. To be fair, it was a pretty tough uh, field that final 64. <laughs> there were many sure. names that we hadn't seen before there, Nanoka. Chris decides to go for it with his ace 10, and he'll be very happy to see that everyone folded rather quickly. That's actually uh I mean, it's not like a crazy move, but it's cool to see him play a hand like Ace 10, while Limitless is actually quite a bit shorter than him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can get behind that for sure. Because some guys are like, oh, just in case. Because, like, 
you mentioned, you know, the pay jumps are getting pretty big. Like pretty soon we're going to get to the territory where you, you bust out. It's like you want a super millions. Yep. We have seen plenty of high roller super millions where first place is around $340,000. I'm pretty sure that a top five will cover that. I actually took a picture of it, but I'm also watching the first half of friends against Germany. Then and Elka, so I'll just wait until the graphic changes. <laughs> are we winning? Yes, we are winning, mate. Friends yes. leading one zero. Baguettes. Nice. Nananoka, all he needs is baguettes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, check, check on the flop here. Villa Marine has got the best hand. I like that he's taking the lead here despite an overcard rolling off. Just because when they check this flop, they're looking to check it down usually. So don't let him get that free card. Villa Marine, he's been like really solid this final table so far. You've seen him jam 10 deuce of clubs from the small blind into the big blind of Limitless. What does he do with King 5 offsuit? He's going to jam that one too. Limitless probably pretty annoyed, right? Where it's like, I, 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 I know what you're doing. I just can't do anything about it. But don't you think for a second that I'm going to fold a weak ace or something? Yeah, he's still annoyed from earlier. Ace 8 suited here. He might get looked up because it's only eight big blinds to judge Trump total. And he's already committed two. I hope you know, by the way, that next Tuesday, I will definitely be in orange. I just didn't want to wear a soccer jersey for the anniversary edition. I was like, we're going to wrap GG as we have an all in and a call. Limitless with ace eight of spades against king jack of hearts. All clubs, still all clubs. We're going to need a king or a jack. With a club, we chop it, by the way. Any club that we chop, <laughs> we actually chop. That's so gross. Oh, this oh, guy, oh. He, he can't beat Judd Trump. He's, he's got to be super salty. Yeah. Like, if you were going to, if you're going to lose that to King Jack, then it's like, okay, whatever. He's, he's lucky, but that is a silly run out. Those are the annoying run outs. Would have actually been funny if it was the king or jack of clubs, right? Where it's like, oh, you got your king or your jack, but <laughs> now you both have a place. That would have been a feels good moment for Limitless. Ace nine, as Adrian Mateus is sitting on ace queen on the big blind. He's got roughly 25, 26 bigs by the looks of it. Yeah, definitely going to jam, jam there. It. It's a jam and please fold situation, basically. Yep. Especially since he is a bigger stack than Limitless, Chris, and Mr. Gamble. Speaking of Limitless, a stand, less than 10 big blinds. Send it? I'll send it for sure. You're the shortest stack. You got the best hand usually in the spot. Um, I don't think it's close. So I believe the payouts are 205k for seven, then 266,000, and top five is 345,000. So yeah, top five is basically like winning a smaller high roller super millions. Almost a million on top for tonight, by the way. That's it's nice. That's insane. Where's Ferrari, man? We need him the most. <laughs> right when. Limitless is about to win the tournament. Ferrari man just shows up. You got to battle <laughs> him if you want the title. <laughs> the Jack rolls off on the turn. So Chris actually takes the lead. It was a pretty decent flop for him anyway with two overs and a gut shot. Uh, it's Chris against Chris, by the way. I just realized Chris Frank takes the lead, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, he does improve, but it's kind of like a funny way to improve. But I guess you'll take it. Ace eight. Doesn't have anything. He's thinking, if I don't bet, I can't represent that queen. So he's just hoping for the best and it just checks down right now. They both are. That is probably what's going to happen. 1.3 million in the middle. Chris wants it. But then again, like against the big blind, Chris, can have, Chris Frank can have a lot of random hands that Chris Putz does still technically beat. But for sure. He beats, yeah. a, he beats a good amount of ants. Not enough. Not too many. Yeah, because <laughs> he loses against every queen, every seven, every ten, every nine, every jack. But uh, And pocket force, of course. But you always lose against pocket force. So we didn't really have to mention that. Does mean that Chris Frank gets a few more chips. Could get some fireworks here with the ace four of hearts and queen ten in the small blind. Chris does not strike me as a folder. This man, okay. 
I mean, things Probably, change. Yeah, Once yeah you leave, things have changed. <laughs> <laughs> you have 15 million chips. You, you three betting this and just putting pressure. You have 11 million chips. You're like, all right, let's hang around. Let's let those little short stacks on the right side of the table bust out. I mean, it's not like he is short, right? Like 11.4 million is still a very big stack. Yeah. It feels like everyone's but, you know, playing quite quick, and that's why the blinds are going up even quicker. They are playing pretty quick. Hmm. Chris is confused on what to do if Ace-8 suited under gun. He's like, I want to play it, but do I? Yeah, yep, well, play. he does. And we know that it's going to work. Those are the ones that feel real good, right? Like when you jam ace queen, you're like, all right, if someone calls, it is what it is. But with the ace eight, you really don't want to get called. Carlos Villamarine has pocket jacks on the button. I think a min race is probably the best thing he could do here. Just make it 600k. Yeah. I hope that one of the other guys does something wild. And Chris is sitting on an ace, but it's a very weak ace. He may just toss in that extra big blind and see a flop. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Uh, he's just going to try to outweigh Limitless with those chips, though. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't hate this either, because there aren't too many great flops for ace dudes. Limitless is 6 4 of diamonds, and I have to. F oh, I thought, like, maybe he is gonna go for it. He's obviously super short, but it's still kind of hard for the other guys to call because both Chris and Mr. Gamble are so damn short, too. Mr. Gamble already received a walk earlier with 7 3. This <laughs> yeah. time he receives the walk with 6 3. Well, he's loving life in that way. Yeah, he's, he's probably like, if I emoji, they'll realize they're giving me walks, so I'm just not gonna say anything. <laughs> Wonder if Limitless decides to go for it here as he's got a little less than seven big blinds with Queen Jack. Philomarine does open. We know that if he does send it, he gets it in pretty decent. But two of the jacks are gonna be dead, and that makes it a bit worse, of course. Yeah, and pocket fives are the new pocket fours, by the way. Like orange is the new black, pocket fives always make a set. He needs to think Villamarine is opening very wide here to to go with his hand, just thinking he's got the best hand, like against Jack 10s, 10 9s, 8 9s, Queen 10s. But he is going to get side called by a lot of random ace fives and stuff, right? Just because she's too short. So mm -hmm. folding makes the most sense. I think with two of the Jacks being dead, maybe that was the correct one. It would have been <laughs> well, a bit he was definitely going to lose that pot if, he, if they got it in, because he hasn't won any hand. Well, he was. Well, he was off to a good start, mate. It just kind of all went wrong when he uh, had aces against queens. We can definitely blame you for that one. Obviously, the quicker everyone folds preflop, the quicker the blinds go up again. In case someone is unfamiliar with this format, the blinds go up based on the amount of hands we play at the final table. You guys can see that in the top left side. So time is irrelevant. It's all about the amount of hands we play. Yeah, felt like telling everyone that 52 episodes in, Roddy. My gosh, you have <laughs> what I've said it. I've I, I've shared that many times. <laughs> yeah, true. I was like, well, we probably got some newcomers watching today. Eh? Yeah, there are always some people who are still a bit unfamiliar with the uh, plan. You'd be surprised the amount of times that I stream poker. And of course, I've got a different audience than most poker streamers. People are like, oh, what side is this? And I'm like, oh, it's usually poker. They're like, oh, is it big? I'm like, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty popular and big these days. And then, like, you start making a snap cam video, and people are like, does the entire table see that? I'm like, yes. They're like, oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I'm like, yes. I mean, <laughs> to be the fair, many... they've got a lot of like um, features where you got to explain, like, snap cam, because uh, obviously mm -hmm. that's nowhere on any site. There's one thing that I'm still missing with the snap cam, and I've already provided GG with this feedback, but that is that there is no, uh, you can select which webcam or which camera or microphone you want to use, but there is no volume adjustment. And sometimes my mic is just super high. So I'm like, hi guys, good luck. And then the entire thing was like, what the WTF, WTF? Cause it's like 300% volume. And I'm like, I'm sorry. So Mr. Gamble seems to have a little internet issue. Okay. Uh -oh. Queen Jack suited. It's a, it's a tricky spot too. He's sitting on 13 and a half big blinds. Oh, that sucks. Because if he would jam here, he would probably take it down. And I feel with under the gun and middle position folding, 
there's a good chance that he would have gone for it. Still, it's really unfortunate. Tricky. But we don't know what he would have done. We don't know if he would have still maybe folded. Possible. Because right. Malinowski is like sitting on six big blinds, so a lot of guys would just, just get out of there. So like Mateo's well, having a little trouble too. Yeah, so that means that maybe there was a server issue. We don't have any updates of our production crew, so I'm going to assume that this has been solved. Of course, we are commentating this final table with a delay. We are live for you guys, and we see the same thing live, but of course, the hands have been played a little while ago. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> it'd be a very, very interesting <laughs> table. <laughs> Oh, everyone is disconnecting. Chris Frank definitely would have played his A7 offsuit from the small blind. This would really come in handy for Villa Marine. <laughs> Judd Trump is still here. He's like, what the hell? Normally, I'm the one disconnecting. What's up, guys? <laughs> this is actually a good use of emoji. Yeah, I think they're taking some time. Seems like Chris Frank is already back as he has decided to limp. With his A7. Not a bad call. I said it before. He flops good tonight. Uh, unfortunately, of course, lost a lot of chips with the 7-6 against the Queens. But the man cannot complain about the flops that he's seen. Yeah, true, for sure. He lost 5 million chips in that land, too. Um, but other than that, if you put those 5 million chip, chips back in the stack, he'd be sitting on 15 million, which is uh, obviously pretty. All right, we're, we're good. Just one hand of that. Mm-hmm. Everyone is back. Limitless is now the big blind as he has only five big blinds behind. And with 7-3, we cannot get too carried away. Adrian Mateus has slowly chipped back up to 6.6 .6 million, but everything just feels short to me. Why does it feel like everyone is short other than Villa Marine, Chris Frank, and Judd Trump? Yeah, all the chips are on that side of the table. The right side is just getting pummeled. Um. Just like who wants to do limitless, like to do the damage on his big blind. <laughs> I wonder if any of our production crew let uh, Mr. Gamble know that if he makes top five or better. I know that they've had a little chat because he actually sent an email saying that he likes the show and he thinks that we do a good job. He's probably mostly talking about you, but I'll take some of the credit too. Look yeah, at Villamarine, by the way. You, to be honest, uh, this is like pocket fours. <laughs> Look at he Villamarine. He liked you until that episode. Just saying. Yeah, but he won that episode, so that was part of, you know, you know, butterfly effect and everything. If he didn't lose that hand with pocket fours, everything else would have been different. And there was a chance he wouldn't have won that final table. So pocket fours helped him to win the event, okay? How about this one? I don't know, Tendu man. Tendu suited. I he like it. Chip. I actually do like it, even though Tendu is obviously not a pretty hand. But we know that Chris doesn't make too many loose calls. And that is still half of his stack. Even if it's only five big blinds, that is half of the man's stack. It's much better to do against a guy where his stack is very important to him. Let's just say yeah. Chris is sitting on 10 million. Well, it's not so good anymore because this guy can side call you off like king four offsuit or whatever. Absolutely. And it probably will. <laughs> yeah. King Jack offsuit is going to open. Well, Chris, you have sent it a few times and it's obviously very close at the bottom. But I think this is a moment where you just got to go for it. Especially since Chris Frank has been opening quite wide. I feel like that VPIP is very wrong because there's no way he still has 16% VPIP. He has been playing so many hands. And the ace jack is actually going to get him to snap fold. Yeah, mandatory jam there. Well done. I mean, it's one thing for it to be a mandatory jam. A lot of people still look at Limitless, look at Mr. Gamma. They're like, ah, 206k is nice, but 345k looks a whole lot better. Yeah, but the thing is, you got to remember, just because Limitless is a shorter stack doesn't mean he's going to lose his next all-in. Like, he could easily yep. double up, and then you're going to wish you made that play before. 8-3 offsuit. This is garbage. Yep, but Mateus is a non-believer. Makes the call with Jack-9 of hearts. Unfortunately for Mateus, this is just a disaster flop. This is where I would really like to see Judd Trump bet small, though. It doesn't have to be big. Quarter Make pot. it like... What? A quarter of the pot, 600K. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, two big checked, blinds. Though. I, I don't like checking because that makes it seem like you were making a move. On the other hand, you can also say like if he had an ace, maybe he's trapping now with an ace. So True. maybe you can do the same bet on the turn. 
But Mateus actually has a little more to work with now. And I said, he's the one that's going to bet into the preflop razor. Well done, by Mateus. I like the way you played the hand. Yeah, that's the problem with checking is you would have won the pot and you would have put pressure on a guy who has to play straight forward, right? With that stack size. So I think he definitely should have should have bet just a quarter of the pot. I'm not asking yeah. you to bet half pot. I'm not asking you to bet a third of pot. Just very, very tiny. Mm -hmm. Or even 1.5 big blinds. Like even if you bet 450k yeah. where it's like, I've got an ace. I just really want you to come along. Look how cheap it is. And maybe I'm bluffing. Because we've seen that before. Those C bets. They are so powerful, especially in a big final table where it feels like every blind matters. He's going to go for it with King Queen of Hearts. I mean, it's a pretty King Queen. And Judd Trump just folded Ace Jack Nananoko. Yeah, I mean, it's 13 wow. blinds. Uh, Would have been in a great position because King Queen was also in Mr. Gamble's hand. All good. How about this one? Though? Oh, no. Your guy. There's no sevens dead. Just saying. <laughs> no, no, no. Now you believe in the suck out. All right, no, no, no. I mean, according to Gigi Martin, Gigi Martin, Kevin Martin. Gigi Martin, that's a good one. Well, that, that is what it is for me. Like, he is Gigi Martin to me because every single time I, I get my chips in the middle when I'm battling with Kevin, I know that the chips are going to head his way. So, Gigi Martin, it is for me. According to Kevin, sevens are the Gigi nuts. And there Still is always a seven. Spot here, though, Rowdy. Like, if you look at it, Chris actually opened the hand. Mateos mm -hmm. probably ships it in or makes three bet. What do you think here, though? Two sevens, six big blinds, one in there. Then I actually think you have to fold. Yeah. Nice. Because you just know that the sevens are no good. I, I like that fold. No matter how short you are and one of your blinds is indeed already in the middle, I, I still think I like that fold. I, I like the discipline there. A lot of guys just go, well, I've got less than 10 big blinds. I've got a little pair. Let's just go for it. But, uh, Oh. What about this one? <laughs> <laughs> and Chris showing Limitless that this time he did have the ace. Obviously, the stack of Chris uh, puts has been slowly but steady uh, growing. And that makes it a little bit less tempting for Limitless to jam into him too. Because he's like, all right, now if you call me, it hurts a lot less. Dude, Mr. Campbell's gotten two walks from this guy already. How do these guys on the right keep getting walks? Like, I don't understand. To be fair, third Chris, time? Yep, it is the third time. But to be fair to Chris, it's not like he has very jammable hands. True, but it's also the opportunity the other guys have been giving, not even opening, to allow that situation to even happen. It's just, wow. Yeah, but if Pretty anything, then we, should, then we should look at Villamarine, right? For the one to exactly. make something happen there. Because Limitless just doesn't have the stack. We know that Limitless would if he still had eight or nine million chips. So then it's definitely up to Villamarine. But maybe he just feels like, all right, all these guys are so short. So if I'm opening garbage, one of them is going to jam and then I'm pot committed and I'm just going to lose chips. Yeah, no, it's just, that's some pretty good. It's, it's run good for a short stack. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that Mr. Uh, Mr. Gamma has 2% VPIP. <laughs> he hasn't is... played many hands since uh, he lost like a lot of chips in the beginning, just losing 500K every single hand. Well, the blinds go up again because it's been a lot of pre-flop play, but not too much post-flop. As we're now at a 350k big blind. 5-3 suited does not go for it. Chris is probably like, damn it. Like, why yeah. do I keep getting these medium spots? Whereas, like, I know I'm kind of supposed to play it, but you guys are really not playing anything. Why don't you guys just go out? So my life becomes a lot easier. I think at this point I start folding now because Limitless is so short. He's going to be forced all in real soon. Ace Ace suited, it's not really a premium. I think I like pre-flop fold here. Same thing for Anderson. I think King 10, like, playable, but 11 big blinds. Guy's going to hit the big blind soon. I don't know if you're behind with me on that or not, Roddy. It's very tough. It's just one of these super annoying spots. But I feel like the longer you take, the more you're actually leaning towards a fold because you're like, no, now they know that I'm weak. Like, this is actually, it's been too long. <laughs> you know, and that starts going through your mind too. So I kind of felt the fold was coming and he does make the fold. I, I don't hate it. Like A10 yeah. suited, I might still think like, I think he's just going to go for it, mate. And, you know, play to win, even though you've got 11 big blinds. But Ace-8, I'm okay with a fold. Yeah, no, nah, it's... 
I'll, I'll, I was going to be surprised if he actually played that one because Limitless sitting way too short here. It is checking down here. Chris Franks, like, normally he would stab these hands, but, like, he's been getting limped by strong hands and bleeding chips to Judd Trump all day t today so far. So and now he waits for the river to bet on the three. It works. <laughs> It does work, takes it down. It's a tiny pot, but yeah, every big blind counts, of course, at this final table. Limitless will probably let this one go too. And that means that the next hand, it's pretty much go time. I don't think Limitless has ever gone down to four big blinds in his life. He's like, he's not a meme. He's like, what is this place? You know, I didn't even know it was possible to have this few big blinds. Oh, and wow. he gets a screen. He gets a screen. Patience Premium. is perhaps a virtue. Uh, Villa Marina is going to go for it. He will think the Jack-10 is ahead against oh, most well. random hands. Let's see if Ace-Queen can hold. Yes, Easy. that is a marvelous flop. Impossible to lose this. Oh. No, 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 go. No. <laughs> Impossible. Oh, oh my no. God. Oh, my God, mate. Why do you do the things you do? I, just, <laughs> I almost knocked over my battle cruiser statue. Oh. Poor Limitless, that is gross. Absolutely gross. It's not just that he lost this one. Obviously, he lost all of his chips with aces versus queens as well. Uh, it just wasn't meant to be for Limitless today. He's eliminated in seventh place. As Villamarine is running hotter than the sun, flops the set now. Yeah, Villamarine is just... He's, like, really solid, and he just keeps winning. He only wins chips. He doesn't win them quickly, but he does win them every single time. Sick for limitless. I mean, like, when, okay, how does he not? How can I not say he's going to double up? Was Ace nine nine? I know. He's up against Jack ten. How do you lose? I just don't like the word impossible. Why can't you go for very likely or most likely? Or this looks really good. Why does it have to be impossible? Why do you tempt them like that? Ah, uh, but no, such a brutal that he won two hundred and five k. Pretty good, Gamble. obviously. Mr. Oh, Gamble, it? go time. Go time for sure. Is he going to get called time? Probably not. Nine bigs. Yeah. Should take it down. Should. <laughs> Villain Rain does have a crap ton of chips. Obviously, the 2% VPIP looks a little strong where you're like, whoa. Even though I opened, he still decided to jam. It's not even that he's open jamming, but he's jamming over my open. And I'm really thinking about it. 2.1 million to potentially play for a pot of 6.3 million chips. I mean, the price is right against this hand for sure. Like, he doesn't know it, though. Yeah, it's very likely that this is an, uh, an ace queen, ace king. Let's see. I guess what you're most afraid of. Villamarine does make the call. So 6.3 million chips in the middle. Can the pocket eight hold? So far, it's looking all right. The spades don't really mean anything. So we need to avoid queens and jacks on the river. It's not paint. Could be an ace. Could be a three or a deuce. It is a three. It's the gamble with the double up. 6.3 million chippies. He's staying alive. Friday bet is still good. Um... Let's see, pocket nines here. He's oh, he's going to jam and get some folds. But uh, no, that sucks for Limitless, I was wanting to say. I want to finish my thoughts. Because obviously, if he won that hand, aces, queens, he had 15 million chips or something with the chip lead. Yeah. That obviously can spring roll over into like like a 500k plus score. Like just such such a brutal spot. But amazing player. Happy to see him make our anniversary final table, though. Yeah. Um, but on a final note, your pick is dead. Brody, just reminding you that. And who's Surrounding. responsible for that? <laughs> you think I am? What do you mean? It's the cards. <laughs> I don't know. This is no longer the cards. I've never been a very uh, superstitious man in my life, but after doing this with you for a year, I've realized there are things <laughs> bigger out there that are not proven by science, but it's a strange world that we live in. Look at Chris Frank. Like, you know what, mate? Just because you've got a few more chips than you had in the beginning of the final table doesn't mean you're going to take these spots away from me. Bumps it up with the queen seven. Yeah, they've been battling, eh? Phenomarine receives a walk with king-queen offset. 
So Chris is now our shorter stack, Austrian Chris, that is. I'm Pirates. like, what? Chris Frank? No way. Austrian Chris. We know that Villamarine likes to jam. He jammed into Limitless quite a few times, with hands worse than Jack-7 offsuit. I uh, I like the way he plays small blind, big blind. Straight forward, yeah, I like it. Just, I got more chips than you, hope for the best. Mm -hmm. No walks here. I'd like to see Mr. Gamble toss in that one extra big blind. I know he doesn't have a monster stack. You know Nine, eight suited is a pretty hand. You don't call yourself Mr. Gamble if you fold this pre. When dude, it's, this is a fair fight. This is a, it's a tricky one. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, that's funny because they both think that's good for them. Mm -hmm. and, and it is. Chris has so many outs. Every king, every jack, every queen, every heart. Now, there aren't too many hearts left. That is not one of them. So the 9-8 of Mr. Gamble is still best in the river. At this point, I feel like he kind of has to know that the 9-8 is good. Yeah, he's probably going to value bet this. Try to get called by like a pocket sixes or something. That is exactly what he does. Chris Frank is having none of it. That's for I'm the surprised quick uh, a bet didn't come out before the river card, right? Like that turn card, like just seems mandatory bet for Chris Frank, but didn't even bite. Jet Trump opening under the gun. Queen Jack offsuit. Adrian Mateus on the big blind with Jack five of clubs. Adrian has been conservative tonight. Uh, maybe he's been in the lap. Look back at a couple of the final tables he'd had last year, and he's like, all right. Definitely could have done a little better at one or two of them. It feels like we're watching a new man tonight. Could be hey, because the pay jumps are a lot bigger, too. They definitely are very big. But, I mean, like, remember you had 50 bucks you put on Thomas Mulocker? Like, if you put on Adrian Mateos today, you wouldn't be as excited. Like, obviously, he didn't lose yet. But, uh, you know, like, you, pre you would prefer the 50 bucks on Thomas Mulocker if, assuming they both don't win it, right? Like, a little bit of action, but at least you went for it rather than chilling. <laughs> Enough, I'm really feeling this. Chris Frank is going to bump it up with Ace Queen of Spades. And Joe yeah, Trump probably getting a little bit annoyed by the amount of resistance he's facing when he just wants to play a little flop. Oh, oh he's got fours. a set. Oh, he doesn't have a set. Chris. He, has his set. Go ahead. He's going to go for it. Roddy, you get to see a full run out this time. A yeah, full but... five cards. I mean, one out, then I know. Then again, that one out was enough for me in that one flip and go that I'll never forget. <laughs> Ace 4 4 against Jack Jack 4. I was like, all right, this is the only time in my life where I will not play pocket force. And the one out has showed up. That's the last flip and go I ever played. Just kidding. That's a lie. I play a lot of flip and goes. Anyways, Mr. Gamble goes for it with pocket nines. Chris is obviously pot committed already. He's going to make the call and he will receive the news that it is a flop. Is there a four? <laughs> no, there is no four yet. The nines are still good. We need to avoid kings and queens on the river. Let's see if it's paint. No paint. That's safe. Wow. Mr. Gamble completely back in the mix. He's up to 12 million chips. And Nananoko, this guarantees him a top five finish. Congratulations to Mr. Gamble for becoming the winningest player of the one year high roller super millions tournament circuit that we've been running here. That's amazing, man. And congratulations for now being second in chips. This guy who's been nursing a short stack, right, for the past hour. He's second in chips, Roddy. Pretty sick. That's very sick. Uh, I think Chris Putz also made the best of it. Sorry, mate, that I'm completely butchering your last name. I. German Austrian pronunciation isn't that great. Uh, I have tried. Walks away with two hundred sixty-six thousand dollars. Hopefully, he's still somewhat happy with it. I think he was personally aiming for that top five, but hey, one hell of a payday. But we're looking at these stack sizes, man. Like Villamarine's clear chip leader, but it seems quite close to me. Like it's going to be very hard to kind of foresee who's going to make it to the end. I'm going to try to find something. What, to to pronounce his name? <laughs> Poots. It's just Poots. All right. Poots. 
Oops. <laughs> All right, that sounds a little bit better than what we did before. Top six. Well, yeah, top five for Mr. Gamble. He takes the top spot on our leaderboard. We've had a lot of, like, we've got some really cool stats. We can't really show you guys all the stats because obviously some stats, uh, technically all of it was public information, but nobody has really been keeping track of it. Obviously, the way that our production crew has been keeping track of it, but it's been really fun. Sometimes I just kind of go through our Excel sheet and I take a look at all the finishes, all the bullets that everyone has fired. I think it's really cool to look into. Oh, for sure. I mean, Chris Frank. So we are down to five. What did you want to say, Nana? Nothing. I just, uh, Chris Frank is, uh, he's still being aggressive. I like it. Adrian Mateos, King Queen suited, reship for sure. Let's flip it though. Like Ace Jack, it's a tough call to make here, man. I personally think I would fold Ace Jack offset. Like Ace suited, maybe. Yeah, that's a lot of right. chips, man. Like this is not the kind of pot where if you lose no biggie. No, if you lose it, your opponent has more chips than you have. Like this yeah. is a very serious pot. Plus, it's a obviously a huge guarantee, huge prize pool. I think folding is definitely seems reasonable. Yeah. Sometimes you fold the best hand. Usually you don't. He's not that far ahead against King Queen suited. Just no, that, that that is the thing. This is maybe one of the better scenarios, and there is still a good chance you lose. So, uh, <laughs> I like how Chris Frank is encouraging him <laughs> to call. He's like, "Come on, mate, you've been running out." Uh, I would be completely on board with a fault if he does make the call. Well, let's run it out. I mean, every time Villamarine has thought about it, he's he's been correct. Can he be correct again? He's thinking about how often his opponent jams like a hand a situation where he dominates. So like an ace ten suited, ace nine, ace eight suited. Yeah. I I don't see that. Especially now with the way that Adrian Mateus has played, and Phil Marine doesn't see that either. I think what he was also maybe thinking about is that there is a chance they are flopping. Oh my goodness, Adrian Mateus has a set. Just a flopping. set against Ace Queen, mate. It's beautiful. If he wants to win the max, he needs to just open jam, guarantee his opponent gets it in. Because if he just raises, he's probably going to lose the spot because he's going to fold. Yep. Now Chris Frank is going to bump it up, if not just jam all in. Ah, I wish he would have opened jam to force. Adrian Mateus would have been the nil chip leader. Rabbit hunt. Come on, production. Let me know. Please tell me that you rabbit hunted that one. <laughs> <laughs> It's not meant to be lately. I feel like the universe has been teasing me. They keep giving us pocket fours, but then they don't actually show the flops. And even if it is a flop, it's already when somebody else folded a four. So it's not totally fair. I feel like stats wise, it's hit less sets than it's supposed to hit sets. Mm, I, I don't think know if I... It was hitting a lot in the beginning, I suppose. Exactly. But yeah, like lately... the last half a year, it just never hits. No, that's true. I think in the first 30 weeks, it actually was above average. And yeah, the last 25, definitely below average. I'll give you that much. As Willem Marine meanwhile has trip aces. Must be nice. Yeah, limp pot. Guy's drawing dead. <laughs> I guess these are the parts where I'd be like, it's impossible for Chris Frank to win this hand. Or impossible for Villamarine to lose his hand. See, that works. Yes, that works because it technically is impossible <laughs> unless Chris Frank somehow gets him to fold, but I don't really see Villamarine folding to anything or any river. Like maybe if the river is like a, a 10 of diamonds or a king of diamonds or a queen of diamonds, but he will almost right. never, ever, ever, ever fold this. So yeah, you could say that it's impossible for him to lose. Chris Franklin has to just jam 12 million right now into 1.6. Then he can win it. But other than that, it's not happening. Wow, Villamarine taking his time. Here we go. <laughs> I like how every single time someone has really taken his time tonight, the other person already made up their mind a long time ago. It's like, mate, you can take as long as you want, but I'm snap folding the hell out of this. Pocket fives. Some say pocket fives is the new pocket fours. He's going to try and see it. Still the best hand. <laughs> it is the best hand. That's the only time they don't make a set. 
I gotta say, I kind of like Judd Trump's hand here, mate. Winning with every queen, every king, every jack, every nine, every eight. I'll take the jack nine of diamonds here. He's not folding this. Yeah, you're right. Nice play. That's... Like it's not like the outrageous amounts of outs. The only time I sweat it is when I've got the two over cards and the open and it's straight flush draw. I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna hit. But this is just like this is a mighty fine amount of the sweet spot of outs. That's actually a pretty big pot that Joe Trump just hit. Uh 3.5 million chips heading his way. He is not a Neil Chip leader. That's still Carlos Villamarine. As the blinds have gone up again, the big blind is now 400 k Makes it a little more doable for Nan and Nuka to figure out how many chips everyone is playing with. This one is tricky. 400. No, I need the 500. Like, the, how am I going to do 400K? It's hard. No, it's not hard. <laughs> well, he's got 15 here. big blinds, 16 if you include the one that's in the middle, Nan and Nuka. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Um, he didn't raise. I guess he was just like, ah, it's a little bit too much to just open ship it. With these blinds going up, it's it's huge, huh? Like they all look like they got big stacks, but they don't really have that big a stack. Nope. It's just very different than uh the one that we've seen before because you know the entire structure is different since it's a multiple day event. Jay ends and actually steals this one away. That's kind of the downside, I guess, of not jamming your suited aces, right? Where those are some ugly ass boards. Four cards in the dead center, far away from your tree. Far away from your ace. Um, yeah. Rainbow I, as well. I personally, I kind of like jamming, just like, well, I know I've got the best hand too much. I just hope for the best because a lot of times when you see flops, you just miss and lose. Oh, you're absolutely correct. But it also doesn't happen too often that you're playing the final table of the High Roller Super Millions Anniversary Edition, right? I think the fact that your tournament life is on the line in such a big one does make it a bit harder. I think in many other tourneys, yeah, just jam. Why the hell not? Yeah, I hear you for sure. Judd Trump's got a little straight draw here. Does he want to stab? It'll work. These guys actually have been starting to check a lot lately, I've noticed, on the flop at least. Well, and now just surviving one more spot will basically give you eight free buy-ins for the upcoming eight weeks of the high roller super millions mate <laughs> so it's sure. like yeah that's nice i can play it for free for two months now that's a definition of a free roll nananoka unless we're firing multiple bullets of course but yeah do you think someone's going to play eight super millions in a row and just fire one bullet i doubt it these guys are always in for two minimum unless your name is nicholas Estet and you only need one bullet <laughs> Let's check, 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 which means the check high is good. I think that's a very pleasant surprise to Adrian Mateus. Probably was one of these very rare spots where you maybe kind of believe that check high is good, but it's also a real seeing is believing moment. Chris Frank receives, I think, probably his first walk of the entire evening. Jay Anderson's got the most walks today by far. Yeah, but I think those days are gone because now it's Villa Marine on his uh, left. Right, I guess. Should have some battle here, I think. Yeah. I'd say toss in that big blind. See if we can flop something good. It's very easy to play post flop. Them suited kings. almost be shocked we're actually closing in on our second break already that's happening in six minutes i feel like time has been flying because i don't know it's a kind of a special celebration night i'm not keeping track of the time at all and we obviously like these dudes i mean these are four of the five we have spoken about quite a few times chris frank is kind of the new phase out there but then he's been making it very fun tonight as adrian mateus is betting into the top pair of villa marine I think yeah. he's gonna give up here, right? Like there's this. Yeah, I think so. Cause two with this stack, you bet the turn. Sometimes you get crying cold, and then you just give up and lose. Like say by like the queen tens, the jack tens, you know these types of hands, the king x weak kickers. He's gonna call again. He's gonna go for it. But 
I hope hmm. he fires a river a decent amount. Otherwise, it's like... To be fair, this is not an easy call with King Four of Clubs. No, it's not easy. I agree with that. Because you could be drawing like dead almost. Yeah. You could be drawing dead. Yes, not almost. No. You see, this is where you can actually say he could be drawing dead. <laughs> I love it. You're so funny. He's thinking. And it Ace 10 strong. is. Yep. And it's not like Ace 10 is impossible to have. It's very possible to have Ace 10. It's obviously a bit ten. sick. Yeah. You got 10 9, you got pocket jacks. Pocket... It's like this is more than just Ace 10, you know? Yeah. There's a lot. You've been Queen Jack crushing you hard. Yep. Wow, Villamarine wow. makes the fold. Well done by Adrian Mateus. Villamarine is not going to be happy to look that one back. Perhaps a rare mess, a misstep for him as he has played a very solid final table so far tonight. I can't really blame him because it feels like there's almost no good river cards other than maybe a king or a four. The four helps a little bit, but could also just hurt you more. I think like the king is like almost the only one that you would be very happy with. So yeah, yeah I can understand it. Just well done by Adrian Mateus. Yeah, pretty tough. But you know, Mateus, he earned it because he's been playing like kind of tight solid today. So he's going to get more credit. It's a big race from Villamarine in the small blind. But Mr. Gamble is a little annoyed because I'm sure he would have liked to see a flop with a 6-5 of spades. Still going to do it and flops bottom pair. And now we've got a weird scenario unfolding where there's 2.6 million in the middle and Villamarine has ace high and Mr. Gamble has a pair of sixes with a five kicker. Decent. This is, I, want, I don't want to say good, but it's a reasonable flop for actually both players here. A little check right now. Does Anderson want to bet? Because a lot of guys check here. But Anderson, he's a little different. I think he might bet. Try to control it. His hand is very vulnerable. That would be a good sizing here. 1.1. 1. 1. Oh, two big blinds. No, 1.5 big blinds, actually. So a less than two big blind pot. I feel like now you're almost forced to stick around. This also opens the door for some check raises, I feel. It does, but I don't think that happens very often. Very rarely, like who's check raising this far in the tournament and these stack sizes. Nah, I don't, yeah, I didn't really see that happening, but he does invite the calls. And now it's kind of like, that's not a pretty card because his hands very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Picks up a five high flush draw. And that's also not quite the flush draw that you feel super good about if you're Villa Marine. It's sometimes nice to have. Oh, makes the flush oh. on the river. Brutal. I mean, I guess, I don't know if brutal is the right word. GG. No, not GG. Not bad beat, just unfortunate. I think that's the right word, unfortunate. Well, I think that Mr. Anderson knows that if he wants to win this spot, he probably has to do something. As I believe friends in the baguettes, no. I thought they just made 2-0, but apparently it's offside. No, 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 I was about to say, at least you gave me one good prediction in your life. But celebrated too soon. <laughs> so I do want to ask you, oh, let me see. I was going to say real quick. Every time you ask me to do some quick final table betting at the very end for, with you, has anyone done, turned into anything? I don't remember. Uh, I believe one week you told me to double my bets and it was the Bruno Volkman uh -huh. week and I did, but to be fair, I kind it of was feel... dirty money. <laughs> yeah, it was dirty money, mate. I don't want to brag about that one and I don't want to give you credits for it either. That's not the way I want to win my bets as I, my heart goes out to all the other guys who believed in the 45 to one dream, but you know, obviously out of our control. Alrighty. So Mateo sneaks slowly picking it up and he's got the perfect river card for his opponent picks up a pair i almost feel like you blessed him where you're like see if you would have put 50 dollars on adrian mateus you wouldn't have had any fun of it at all well it's been a never-ending upswing ever since for adrian it's too so, solid it's gonna go for a pretty big bet on the river here a little less than six big lines He's trying to rep represent that Miss Flush draw. Doing a good job representing him. Might get looked up by this 10. Chris has been an adventurous player, but hasn't made a lot of bad calls and avoids this one too. Well done by Chris Frank there. He's short, man. He's short as stack. Wow. 
Yeah, okay, but he, he he's short as in he's got almost 22 big lines to play with. Yeah, I mean, it's tough for everyone. It's a lot of guys with 20-something bigs, but yeah, Chris Frank from 15 million to 8.7, 5 million with 7-6 suiting to Queens. Uh, it's just the blinds have gone up. It's safe to say. That is a reasonable flop for uh, Joe Trump. And you do defend your big blind with Ace Jack. Phil and Ring going for the super small sizing. What do you think is the right play here for Joe Trump? Is it just always only call and nothing else? Pretty much. I mean, like, the thing is, you don't really have a raising range on this ace ace king board from the big blind. You shouldn't, because you can't ever have the nuts. So you should just go on. Just hope you're basically hoping your opponent can multi barrel. You try to multi barrel you off like a king or a queen jack type hand. Well, Villamarine did make a pair of sevens on the turn, but he decides to just check it. I gotta say that's probably a somewhat annoying river card for Judd Trump, but I'm sure that he's quite happy with his hand still. Trip aces is trip aces. Yeah. I agree. It's hard to get called by worse here, though. Yeah, and that's why checking seems reasonable. Um, you just hope your opponent just goes for a YOLO bet, because mm -hmm. you betting doesn't get called anyways. I agree with you. And that's going to do it for the second hour of week 52 of the High Roller Super Millions Anniversary Edition. Of course, this was a multiple day event. This is part of the high roller week that has been taking place over at GG Poker. We've got a couple of highlight videos prepared for you guys. Once more, take a look at ggstore.com where you guys can order not quite this hoodie, but a couple of other GG hoodies. Uh, definitely some cool stuff in that store already and more cool things will be added in the future. We're going to take a couple of minutes and then we'll be back for the third and perhaps final hour of our anniversary night. Hello, everybody. Daniel Granu here with some good news from the GG Poker Network. We've been preparing a promotion for the new year called GG Care. As any poker player might know, sometimes you find yourself in what we call unfortunate situations. You know, some ugly bad beats, right? Well, that's where GG Care comes in. GG Care will take care of you with huge prize pools available every day. Let's see how you can get your GG Care benefits. Aces versus Kings. Yep, all in before the flop. I mean, nobody's gonna fold that, right? That's just a setup. It's a cooler. I can't imagine being, you know, at the final table of the World Series of Poker heads up and this happening to me. It's just brutal. Bad beats should never be a thing, but eh, they are. Thanks, GG. I flopped the top set. Very nice. Some fucking idiot chases a runner runner straight to suck out on me. Unbelievable. But in my darkest moment, GG Care was there. Thanks, GG. Flop the second nut set. The middle set on the flop. It's an impossible cooler. How can you be beat there? The guy has top set. Nobody's folding that. Sometimes it just feels unfair. Thanks, GG. As you can see, in the most unfortunate of situations, GG Care will appear for you. Are you curious how to get these benefits? Don't worry. You don't even have to lift a finger. First, Simply enjoy the game as usual. Whenever something unfortunate happens, GG Care will be there. Secondly, when confronted with such circumstances, GG Care automatically will register you into a flip out tournament with a huge prize. Just check the pop out window. Thirdly, take a rest, have yourself a nap, get yourself a good night's sleep, clear your mind of all the bad beats, and when you wake up, the daily GG Care prizes will be waiting for you. That's all there is to GG Care. Pretty simple, isn't it? Just play the game as normal and GG Care will take care of you. And the prize money will only grow more and more in the future. So keep your eyes posted and good luck, everybody. I hope you don't have too many bad beats, but if you do, GG Care will be there. Thanks, GG.
Melky was waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my god. Michael Otamo is the best. Welcome back to our number three of week 52 of the High Roller Super Millions, our anniversary, as we are down to five. Mr. Gambo is still in the mix, and he has already secured the top spot on our leaderboard. The wingiest player of the entire year, Nanonoko. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty sick. But, I mean, that doesn't take away from all the other great winners out there, like especially Lena 900. He had <laughs> fantabulous year and obviously he won that what wcc main event for 750k recently so like it's all around great players it's been i've learned a lot watching i'm sure you have too wow he's four wow. yeah i haven't seen this in a while no and this is actually one of the first times that uh Joe trump has made a move like this as well uh but yes obviously i am in complete agreement about lena 900 even though that man has only caused me pain on a personal level as a poker fan, it's been an absolute joy to watch. Um, but no, Judd Trump, he he's very selective. Like he's quite solid, um, and then he makes some moves here and there, and they seem to always work because uh, you know he plays off his image really well. It's a funny flop. Mount on board, all clubs. Villa Marine has a nine high flush draw. <laughs> it's a tough flush draw to continue with. Is it good enough for a quarter of the pot? It is only one point something big blinds, right? Yeah, I guess it is. Wow, 3.2 million in the middle. Can Judd Trump fire one more time? If he does, he's Absolutely. definitely targeting hands. Kind of what Villamarine is sitting on. Right, because it's like, well, what do they fold? Or like a king without a club. I can see that hand folding for oh, sure, too. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, sick. He's playing well, man. Like in the beginning of the night, we already said we've only seen this guy make the final table with four big blinds, five big blinds. And this is the first time he actually came in with a proper stack. And of course, he could have been out with the queens against Limitless's aces. But yeah, it's not like he did anything wrong in that hand. Like he played queens like we all would. <laughs> I, uh, I am definitely impressed by the performance of Judd Prom to, uh, tonight. He's really solid. And like I said, like his bluff seems to always work. He doesn't do them too much, but because you do all the time, well, they don't start to work as often. 22 bigs here. Yep. Interesting. Villamarine has jammed a lot from the small blind, but obviously into slightly smaller stacks than the stack that Mr. Gambo is currently sitting on. Yeah, Mr. Gambo's wondering if he should jam or just check. Oh, he's going to raise. Okay. He's like, oh, I don't want to risk all of it. It's always a good check. feeling, right? When you go for two out of three and it's the third one, then an okay. <laughs> you know, in StarCraft 2, uh, when people predict the build orders, there are often like three choices, right? As Mr. Gamble has kings now, but the other players have nothing. It's like, oh, is it going to be a Twilight or a Robo? And then it's a Stargate. And it's like, all right, well, now we all look stupid. <laughs> we went for two out of the three options and it was the one we didn't mention. <laughs> At least the, what, the Stargate let you build the Battle Cruiser. Uh, almost the carrier. Same thing. Uh, not quite. <laughs> it's, it's like it's like ace queen ace king. Same thing. You're like, is it? No, really. It's kind of funny how this is now happening. Two hands in a row. Last hand it was happening with ace four offsuit. Obviously, slightly different positions too. 
Kings are going to take it down. Mr. Gamble. No, third in chips. Pocket tens, a screen, a screen. That's technically a great moment for a pocket tens, right? So much less likely that a screen is going to beat him. 100%. And I think Mateos doesn't have to get involved because Anderson probably will be putting in the race himself. Yes. Ooh. Pays to act last, huh? <laughs> This is actually uh, kind of annoying when you're Adrian Mateus. Five-handed, a screen, you normally like, all right, this is my hand, let's win some chips. And then you see all this violence under the gun open and bot and three bet. Yeah, I don't think he'll continue. I think Mateus is thinking, oh, I'm ready to reship on someone. He's like, i actually folding this hand with 20 yeah. big points. Sick. But this is yep. the tough part. I mean, it's the third hand in a row that Mr. Gamble is raising. First the ace four, then the kings. Now it's pocket tens. If I'm Chris Frank, and I take into consideration that he has also raised the previous two hands, I like my ace queen a lot more. Plus well, you blocked it. Oh, here we go. Now he's in yep. bad shape though, right? Because up ace one ace queen dead. Yep. That actually does become a little bit of a decision for Mr. Gamble too, but Mr. Gamble makes the call. It's ace queen offsuit against pocket tens. A screen has already been folded once at something Chris Frank does not know, of course. Tens is still looking good. Can Mr. Gamble avoid aces and queens on the river? Yes, he can. Nice. That's a 10, actually. He makes a set. Couldn't have been a nine because the nine of clubs is already out. That means that Chris Frank, the man who came in as chip leader, is eliminated in fifth place. Does still walk away with $345,000, I believe it was. We're down to four. And Mr. Gamble is our new chip leader i cannot believe that i'm actually saying those words tonight but yeah. here he is he's, he's he's done it again he's continuing to do it wow so sick chris frank uh he's look first time final table he was fun to watch roddy um and it's kind of like you won a super millions 345k score kind of mm -hmm. like you won one um uh, no phenomenal he was he was fun to watch i hope he comes again this is like we're all winners. Everybody gets a participation trophy. The entire top five is now higher all a super million champion. And it doesn't quite work like that. The ribbons are hard to earn over at Gigi Poker. That comes from a man who has tried many times over the last year. No ribbon. <laughs> well, we got four guys left. Love Mr. Pot. Gamble right now. Hey, you have a hundred dollars on Mr. Gamble, is that right? I do. And you have a break even bet on Judd Trump. Like this is a lock for you, Roddy. My God, if I've ever seen one. Well, it's not quite break even anymore. If Judd Trump wins, I lose fifty bucks because I put fifty bucks on Thomas Mulacker. Okay, but like it's better than losing all of it. Oh, absolutely. But let's not celebrate too early before we head into the heads up between Villa Marina and Mateus. You have uh, no idea <laughs> the things that I've encountered in my life in Nanoka. <laughs> All right, let's see. So, all right, so it's raise preflop after limp. It's going to bet. Well, wow, it gets called by Queen Jack High. This is blind versus blind, Rowdy. This is mm -hmm. a weird call, I would say. It's funny as well, because I actually prefer the Jack 10 over the Queen Jack here, which I know doesn't make any sense because the Queen Jack is quite a bit better. But okay, now Villamarine is betting into Mr. Gamble. All right, it was weird. Now it gets really weird. This is, they've got some game here, right? Like, this is a weird check call. Now he's leading, pairs the bottom card. Anderson's got a, not a good hand, but it's a might be enough for this price because it's so small and it's 4.5 in the middle. I think he's going to continue just because it's so cheap. He's going to, oh raise my it God. Up. Oh, okay. Well, I'll give that man the trophy. I would give you my Battle Cruiser statue if you want to have it right now, Mr. Gamble. What a hand. Well, 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 that's the hand of the night. I don't even know what the hell just happened there, but yeah, I play. know that he played it well. Well, Roddy, you need to take back that statement quickly because he has emailed production before. He may want that Battle Cruiser, so you better take it back now. Well, you can order them from the Battle.net website, but they have smaller <laughs> models and they're not that expensive, so I'll gladly give it to Mr. Gamble if he really wants one. He'll get a tiny edition. He won't get my big one. <laughs> Jack four and pocket force. Hey, this is like the flip and go promo. 
<laughs> it was Jack Four, wasn't it? I think it was. Yep, Jack Jack um, Four. Is he gonna flop a set? Oh. No, Again. this is not fair. You cannot expect pocket fours to flop a set when the other guy has a four too. I do think I'd call here though. King nine nine. Oh, for sure. I mean, I would definitely call because I still believe the set is coming anyway. <laughs> oh, oh my falls. gosh. Wow. I'm very surprised. I think a little bit of a brain fart in that one. Like two. Oh, aces for Phila Marine. Well, I'm looking, you and me all looking at the other three hands like, does something, can they give action? I would love to see a smooth call here of two aces. Um, 20 big blinds is kind of a, it's a lot to jam. He's going to get a little greedy, but I think I would love to see a smooth call there. Yeah, but I also think it's because they've been battling so much. It creates a different dynamic where it's like, hey, man, I'm actually going to do this with a lot of hands. Okay, this is not just aces. Well, this time, Joe Trump has kings. Jay Anderson first has king nine offsuit against aces. Now he's got king eight offsuit against kings. Yeah, uh, it seems like a little bit of a waste of aces, in my opinion. I mean, when I think of a waste of aces, I think of the man, uh, I was Pi Pi, right? Who decided to just uh, open five big blinds every single time he had kings or queens. <laughs> Alrighty, so check check on a flop. So King Eight looking uh, all right, even though it's clearly not gonna win this hand. Um, but he probably will pay off here and just see a river card and see what happens. French just made two zero. The baguettes, baguettes and cheese, the baguettes. mate. <laughs> the baguettes and croissants. Okay, not the cheese. Okay. Oh, King Eight offsuit is obviously in some trouble. I don't think Judd Trump is ultra worried, but I also don't know if he's going to bet again. It does kind of feel like Mr. Gamble has a eight or a nine. Yeah, he should bet again. Blocking the flushes to help so he can value bet a little bit safely. I don't know if he'll pay off though. Hmm. Checks the flop. Yeah, I would love to see Mr. Gamble fold, but sometimes he's just a little suspicious. Hey, this is just player dependent. Looks like he's going to lay down. All right, can you? Here's my question Can you name a single player on the French soccer team? Yeah, absolutely. Apparently, the goal was disallowed, by the way. No, I, I follow soccer quite well. Yeah, uh, I think, in my opinion, I mean, this is not super relevant, but I think. Uh, Kylian Mbappé is the best player in the world right now, and he's French. French, so. Oh. Uh, but I I know most of that team. Like they have very they have legit a star-studded lineup. Okay, never mind it. Never mind. Just trying to catch you. Yeah, yeah no, no. I know, I know football reasonably well. I have to admit, I was a little more fanatic a few years ago. There's a couple of things that kind of bothered me about football, but it's still a, a sport that I follow pretty closely. So. Very familiar with most of the players in this game. Judge Trump, A6, kind of. Now, he's not going to fold this one, is he? It's kind of funny because it's very similar to the last one, but his hand's actually worse, right? It was King 9 9, he had pocket fives. Fours. Oh, pocket fours. <laughs> right. Oh, this time. This time he does stick around. Has a little more faith in the ace high than he has in the pocket force. Adrian Mateus is <laughs> currently playing six high. I actually wouldn't even mind just a check here. Ah, okay. Oh, no. You got a bet now, right? Because the five got there. Jesus Christ, Roddy. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's just really brutal for uh, Judd Trump, but I totally understand the check because he probably feels that he had the best hand, but. There's also no need to make the pot any bigger than it is. Just want to avoid certain river cards. Unfortunately, that's the one river card he doesn't want to see. I love the sizing here of Adrian Mateus. Basically, one big blind. It's perfect. 25% of pot. He's basically sizing against the three. Mm -hmm. oh, that's so points. annoying for Judd Trump. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you just level yourself when you see these small 
sorry i just like oh, i want to see what you got maybe i win and then you just never win It, it doesn't make any sense here as well to make a play, right? Because this is not very credible. If Judge Trump would have raised, does make the correct fault. And well done. Adrian Mateus wins a little pot as the blinds go up again. Big blind is now 500k. Nanoko, good level for you. It's, it's a really good level. Um, nah, this is one of the best for sure. <laughs> A7, you're jamming. You know, he's just going to raise into 20 bigs. But Queen 10 is going to battle. I mean, yeah, Mr. Gamble is the clear chip leader, but like he's only got 40 big blinds, so it's really anyone's game still, in my opinion. Not the worst flop for Queen 10. Got shot, overcard to the board, Queen of Pretty Clubs good. as well. It's a little bit of everything. See, when you get when you get better at poker, you like, these are pretty good flops, right? Like you still got nothing. It's just a bunch of okay draws, but that's just how it is. Yeah. Now, the real nothing is uh, that ace three of spades and then there's king nine, ten, eight or something in the middle with no spades. Like that's nothing. Okay. It's like, all right, we're never going to win this. But if I'm filming ring here, I'm like, all right. I mean, we didn't flop the nuts, but this is the closest thing to it. <laughs> 3.2 yeah. million chips in the middle decides to check it back the deuce of hearts is obviously an absolute brick kind of would have liked to see Villamir had fired that flop but I guess he didn't want to actually get blown off his hand in case he gets like check raised would like to see him bet now no? well okay. talking about a brick run out deuce deuce <laughs> Not even the deuce of clubs yeah, to spice like, well, it up. Okay, I got maybe get the showdown just for free. So what he wanted last hand with his a6 did not get there. Now Villamarine may be tempted to do the same thing as Adrian Mateus, but it's just the line is very different. He is forced to check it back, and the ace high is good. Alas Villamarine, the man who was a chip leader for a long time, is losing more and more chips. Yeah, these are. Uh... Ship leaders are just crumbling, huh? It was 15 million of Chris Frank, and now he's out in fifth. Billy Marie now, he's in the last place. Only guy maintaining a stack is Adrian Mateos. He's like the most solid player of them all. Yeah. Came in with 7.9 million after two hours of poker. He's got 9.3. Basically gained uh, two big blinds. Current level. Look at this. Villamarine making a play on Mr. Gamble. A sneaky play as he decides to limp with the ace queen of diamonds. I was about to ask you, what is the best way for him to play it? And I think I kind of like this, man, because we know that these chip leaders like to bump it up with garbage. They have done this time and time again. And Mr. Gamble will do it once more. And now it's obviously open jamming season. Yeah. No, I like this a lot too, especially against the dynamic they've had. Um, Gamble has actually raised limp a lot so it just seems like a mandatory limp jam here so well done extra chips yep this is very if you're mr gamble you shake your head you're like he got me <laughs> that boomer got me <laughs> you know there's one thing you haven't said yet rowdy about your birthday we haven't seen and it's, a, it's the anniversary edition i hope the opportunity comes you can talk about it again <laughs> mate like a little while ago i played the hyper for two hours and then first hand after the break i'm like all right guys we have a pretty good stack let's run it up first hand gets followed to me in the small blind i have eight five of hearts i'm like all right we got to jam this i jam and just get snap called by ace king and the guy obviously flops an ace two, flops me super dead, hits me with the thank you emoji. I'm like, God damn it, why am I such an idiot? Like, it was like 30 big blinds too in a hyper. <laughs> you know, he should have said back to you, happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was that big of a fan of the super millions, but yes, would have been proper banter. I think I would have been able to appreciate it after a couple of minutes. Well, yeah, Trump is going to raise it up with the do stand. Apparently not scared off by uh, the exchange that just took place between Jay Anderson and Villamarine. 
A seven of diamonds, hey. gem. I mean, you could definitely would be plus chip EV. I think he's just gonna open a raise though. I think unless he really wants to shut out his opponents. You think? Oh, never mind. You got it, Roddy. You and it. Mateo's the same. Uh, to, I like the way he's been playing tonight. Actually, I like it a lot. Uh, obviously, I mean, you hyped him up from the very first episode, and I'll admit, a year ago when we just started doing this, I was like Adrian Mateus. I was like, I don't know, man. I know Tom Dwan and Phil Ivy and Elky, but who's Adrian Mateus? You know, that just uh, that came a little bit later to me, and uh, then obviously became very familiar with him. We know that he's very good. I was a bit disappointed in that one showing where he finished fifth. He really should have won that one. Uh, it, it almost felt like he was playing three other 10Ks at the same time. He was just clicking buttons. And I was like, come on, this is such a good spot for you. I think tonight he's really been making the best of it. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't been running hot or anything. So just uh, playing the cards he's been dealt and doing an all right job. And this one, though, it's uh, tricky, tricky. But if mm -hmm. he re-jams here, I don't think Judge Trump will pay off. Like, we saw this spot similar to someone else. The uh, 18 big blinds from Adrian Mateus. Uh, this is definitely a tough call for Judd Trump. It's pay 8 million to win 18 million, but you're going to go up against an ace queen and an ace king so often. It's getting him in pretty bad there. And Judd Trump will lay it down. Good play again by Adrian. Right when we are singing his praise, he impresses us with another solid play. Yeah, just super solid here. Mr. Gamble, let's go. Still a chip leader. Did lose a couple chips from his all-time high because he was at 21 million at one point. But it's all good. Little Marine has pocket sixes. You think he's jamming the sixes into the rays of Anderson? Or not? Nah, probably just yeah. call. Nah, like, I think if you, what you want to think about is do you have enough forward equity, then you should go for the jam. If you don't, then you should start calling. I think Actually, against a chip leader, four-handed, you got a lot of forward equity. I think this is a mandatory jam. Don't think it's close. Right. He is going to jam. Mr. Gamble will let go of his King-10. Ah, these four are really battling, and I think anything is still possible. Obviously, 20 big blinds on the side of Adrian Mateus. A little over 25. Or actually, uh, over 30. On the side of Joe Trump. A6, small blind against big blind. Are we jamming this one too? No, we are going to limp. Maybe he knows that uh, maybe Mr. Gamble is a bit more timid after what happened last time where he just did decide to bump it up with the nine deuce. And then he jammed. Okay, and You're the right. ace queen. You see, actually, he raised Jack 10 in the spot previously. But mm -hmm. then once you see, once you see the limp jam, you're, you're, you're like, all right, we know it's in their play. You change your whole strategy. Not the worst flop for Jack 10. Not the best, but something you can sort of work with. Mr. Gamble decides that it's worthy of a tiny bet. Little over one big blind. The mm -hmm. A6 offset makes the call, but that is not a card that makes you feel good at all if you're Villa Marine. And I think if Gamble goes for another... Ooh, what is this? The, the, haven't we seen this before? Is this where Mr. Gamble raises and Villa Marine falls? Like, <laughs> deja vu? I think Villa Marine is hoping that because it happened last time, you kind of don't make the same mistake twice. So he's thinking... This will get more credit this time, but it doesn't. It happens again, and he folds again. You turn into a little bit of a robot for me during uh, that speech, but I uh, could figure out. But you know, I, I was able to understand what you said. It just kind of came out really funny because you were like very slow and robotic. But uh, yeah, that's pretty bizarre. I mean, obviously, this spot was perhaps a little smaller than the other one and less impactful, but not the first time. Adrian Mateus is going to raise it up here with the ace-10 offsuit. Punish the limp of Mr. Gamble. <laughs> this uh, tiny dunk bed on the turn is not working out for Villa Marine. I think we got to remove that play from the playbook for the rest of the night. Yeah, I was just saying he was uh, hoping that since he did it last time, 
he wouldn't get raised again. But yeah, no, too smart. Queen seven from the button, little raise. Let's see what Judd Trump decides to do. Once more, I actually like the way that all four of them play tonight. I don't think we can really say that any of these guys made top four, but didn't deserve to make top four. Judd Trump got fortunate, but didn't do anything wrong. I think it's anybody's yeah. game. In general, all four of these guys are like really solid today. I absolutely agree. Joe Trump decided to just defend with the ace three. He does hold the ace of clubs. He does have the backdoor wheel draw. It's it's not much, but yeah. does have the yeah. best hand. Yeah. And obviously, he does still have ace high. That is something to always keep in mind. Is this one of those if you call flop, you got to call turn kind of pots? <laughs> Not like that? even close. Not even huh? close. <laughs> Guys sit on ace high. Yeah, mandatory call down. Joe Trump may think that his hand is the best. I feel like Jay Anderson, if he wants to steal this one away, he's going to have to bet pretty big. I, I don't think a bet of like 800k or 1.1 million is going to get it done. Uh, a check is definitely not going to get it done. Ace high is good. Well, Joe Trump gets rewarded, and that means that we have a new chip leader. Because he now has a few more chips than Mr. Gamble. This guy, Jet Trump. We actually have no idea how he played before today because he just kept getting ninth place. <laughs> This is not the, not the moment for Villamarine to make a move. He does make a move. And I know Joe Trump has been a little tight in some of these spots. I don't think he's really feeling this, especially not since Villamarine has done this time and time again. I won't even be surprised if he jams here. I know that would be very excessive, but he decides to just make the call. It's not the best flop for King Jack. It's, yeah, out of position without the betting initiative. Villamarine, this isn't... Decent flop for the 7 3, right? You got a little straight draw. Your pairs are probably live a decent amount of time. Small bet. It's a quarter pot. <laughs> it, it really sucks to fold here. And I don't think he will actually. Like, this is one of these, all right, let's just play a turn. You know, a, a queen is an all right card too. A club could be exciting. Any king, any jack is obviously something you'd love to see. I have Actually, the best hand too. Yeah. Because people raise so much garbage in, in the big blind against the limp. Fiddle Marine, of course, does have a gut shot. With a four, he makes a straight. But, I mean, that's not as exciting as pocket four. So we're not going to talk about that. Let's see what Judd Trump decides to do. Goes wow. for the race. I love it. He's so solid, man. This guy is so smart. His hand's not over, though, I guess, right? Like, the guy could peel if he wanted to. I don't know if he will, because he's so shallow. That's the problem. If he had more chips, he can definitely peel. If he had 7-3 of clubs, then a no call, I would be on board. But with 7-3 offset, no club. <laughs> right. I, I don't see a way. Well, he's thinking. He's wondering, is there a world where this guy's just check-raise bluffing me and I can just win this pot at some point? Well, at some point would probably have to be with a gem right now because I think calling seems suicidal. I feel like if we want to win this spot, we got a gem. He makes the call and oh. actually makes the best hand with a pair of threes, but that's obviously not the card he was really looking for. I find it this is a bizarre hand, man. Yeah, for sure. See, you were saying he can't call. He made the call, Roddy, all right? So without even a club. No, after he's check raises King Jack and this card rolls off, it's kind of like, I guess I kind of get to give up. Is he really going to fire again? This guy, his opponent's got 11 and a half big blinds left. I don't think he's putting his opponent on a 7 4. And like, there's maybe a chance that with the way Villamarine played it, there is like a 4 3 is a possibility. 
but obviously then the tree wow. doesn't do that much. Yo, Trump does fire again. A little over four big lines. What a read. Because you know what I'm thinking? Judd Trump's thinking, like, this guy's got 11 big blinds. If he had a 10, he would have reshipped me on a flop a lot of time. People raise so much garbage from the big blind limp pot. So he thinks his opponent has, like, a 6x. Like, say, like, a queen 6 offsuit or something garbage. 5x. Something very weak. Because I think the 10 would always jam this flop. Yes, you gotta remember, Villamarine took a long time to call. He calls again. And the nine of clubs rolls off. Huh. I Can don't know Judd what to Trump make of this. Jam this? A gem would probably get Judd it done. Trump because there is this. no way. I, I, He'd win. I almost feel like he For has sure. to. But his opponent only has the 33% of the pot remaining. But his opponent really looks like he's got like a 6 7, a 5 4, like a pair straight draw. Four, he's a three. 10. Yeah. A 10 would 100% jam that turn. A flush draw probably would have jammed that flop. I think Judd Trump's got the right idea right now. Can he just fire one more bullet? He oh does. my god, he does. <laughs> King Jack all the way. And now Villamarine has to make a call for the super wow. line, line with bottom pair. Can obviously not make that call. What a hand by Judd Trump. In the beginning of the show, we said we just haven't... Oh my goodness, this could be it. Well, maybe not. No, it's probably not going to be it. Well, I mean, it's all in, but like, wow, yeah. sick. Judd Trump is, that was a sick hand, man. He has some amazing hand reading, too. Yep. Very, very well played by Judd Trump, who is now our dominant chip leader. Villa Marine is going for it. I don't know why we're leaving 62,000 chips behind here. That always feels like, I feel like you just take a risk of disconnecting. But he does get it in good. Flops a king as well. Needs nice to avoid double. the tens, though. So basically, Mateus went from... Mateus went from two outs to four outs, but that's not a 10. Yeah. It's a seven or a six or something. A six it is. So that means Willemarine is back to 7.8 million. Now Adrian Mateus is a short stack. What a hand there. What a hand. Yeah, no, that's just a six, six bluff. Like it's a beautiful hand reading. The more I thought about, it, the more it actually makes sense why he continued turning river. It's just like... If his opponent had more chips, he probably would have gave up yeah. at some point. But the fact that he had less chips made it maybe easier to read that he had a middling type hand. Because, like I said, a flush draw, 10, they would have just jammed, but a fluff or turn by now. Do you think Villamarine could have jammed turn with his gut shot and his bottom pair? He could have. But I think he thought he was up against a 10 a lot. And he was also, but for a random hand. So he was. I don't know. It's just a, it's a ridiculous hand, but it was a very, very good one today. Mm -hmm. We've had a couple of awesome hands, to be honest. Pocket fives raising from the button as Judd Trump is sitting on the Ben CB powerhouse, flops a gut shot and backdoor spades. You know what I'm thinking, Rowdy? Whenever I say I'm, I had that three seven there. I'm like. Why did I raise this pretty flop? Why did this happen to happen to me? It's like the one of the biggest spots he's probably in his career, right? Like first place is 975k. We've got like 130k pay jumps or whatever. Like oh my gosh, they're playing for a lot of money. And eternal glory. The fives got counterfeited. King High uh, actually looks pretty good here, doesn't it? <laughs> like I've got the nuts. <laughs> yeah, value betting King High. <laughs> I like it. Not too shabby. I was about to ask He's you on the turn, guy. which hand do you prefer? And I was going to say, I think I prefer the king six. Uh-oh, pocket sixes and pocket eights. This could be bad news for Mr. Gamble. I can fold, right. I guess. Cool. Yeah, he's definitely losing those two big blinds. He's not getting them back. And that's it, I think. Yeah. If you call here and you're wrong, you are basically as short as Adrian Mateus. I gotta say, Mr. Gamble has been running a little cold. Yeah, the fire, the fire emoji goes away immediately. Oh, no think. more flames for him. Mateus might jam here. He does. Judd Trump domination. We gonna lose your man? We have seen a screen fold a couple of times. This is obviously not one of the spots. Let's see if Judd Trump can hold against the A7. 
<laughs> got exciting with the spade at first. And we need a seven and a seven only. Or Adrian, what about it? No, ten is no good. Needs to be a seven. That's not a seven. The three of diamonds is no good for Adrian Mateus. That means Joe Trump is now our dominant chip leader with 31 million chippies, 32 million even. We're down to three. Adrian Mateus goes out with $447,000. On our special anniversary night. Not a bad showing by Adrian. I know he came in third, but he just he didn't have much Nananoko. He really didn't get a lot to work with tonight. I think he made the best of it. But the cards he was dealt, it's not too bad, fourth place finish, because this is one of the bigger ones too. Um, I wouldn't feel too bad if I was him. Just kind of like I wish I ran better today. But uh it mm -hmm. is what it is. It could have been a lot worse. Let's not forget that uh hundred percent. <laughs> Yeah, at one point he was already quite short. Means we're down to three. Villa Marine, Joe Trump, and Mr. Gamble. But Joe Trump now obviously has more chips than the rest of the table combined. <laughs> I got that one. That, that oh, is a classic. Man. The Roddy Bingo. Check it out. I'm just really loving the way he's playing right now. Like, uh, just reads are perfect. Like, can you believe this guy almost went out in eighth place when he came into found table second place? Like, the aces and queens. I still can't forget that hand, but uh, mm -hmm. he's he's doing great. He's also really showing up. Uh, the guys who make the odds. He's like, hey, I had more chips than Adrian Mateus, but I had a higher payout to win it. You guys really think that I'm that bad? Well, definitely made a statement tonight. For sure. Um, but you know, we're still three-handed. Anything can happen. But Villa Marine, like. I think it's his second final table. He got second or third the previous one. So like second, he got second. But this is another amazing score for this guy. It's super solid. Yep. Top three pays five hundred and eighty thousand dollars. That is more than uh, most of the regular high roller super millions pay. Ace oh, nine oh. of diamonds and aces. All right. Before you said somebody wasted their aces. What should Mister Gamble do with these aces? Well, with this stack size, he's definitely going to three bet it and him being in second place. Yeah, he's going to make it like four million or something, I guess. Well, I would make it like one. I don't know. Three. I want to say three, three, six, three, eight. Because uh, you do kind of want to like four million becomes big and it becomes a lot yeah, more true. tempting. For but then it also gets suspicious when you do this too, right? Like, oh, it looks strong. Judd Trump is solid. Like, on paper, this is a mandatory call, and he is going to make that Ooh. call. Um, well, Judd Trump will probably think that that's a pretty reasonable flop for him as he makes a pair of nines. We know it's no bueno. Mr. Gamble's probably like, did I really want this action? When you see this flop, you're like, hmm, no. I don't want to get be all in by the river card because that means I lose. I actually had a... Uh, situation like this once where i played a you know one of the the esports sit and goes nine gamers got invited and then this exact scenario where i three bet a guy called played a lot of hands i had aces and it was queen queen nine or queen queen eight or something and i bet with my aces pretty small and the guy just like immediately ripped it and i had to call off all my chips and i'm like oh my god like you really have like ace queen king queen here but i was like i can't fold aces so i called and he had king queen and i was very sad because that was like the easiest there was five thousand euros at top it was an invite sit and go and like the level of that sit and go compared to regular tournaments where you could win 5k it's like it's below the fucking ground okay like you know these guys <laughs> had no idea and i was like man like I don't, I am not often the best player at the table, but I know I am here. And I was like, it sucks. <laughs> sucks to lose. John Trump with the raise with ace nine of diamonds. So this is a blocker race trying to show down. Um, with, even if Anderson has a hand like aces and kings, jacks and tens, he really can't put any more chip. Like he can just call. He can't really re-raise all in here. Um, because Judd Trump actually has a queen a lot. So... He's going to make the call and it's likely just going to go check, check yeah. pretty quickly. I think this is a check, check indeed. Joe Trump realizing that this pot is big enough the way it is and the king is obviously no help to him. Mr. Gamble wins a big one. He is not our Neil Chip leader. Could have been, but I think perhaps he made the best of it. You said the other aces were wasted aces. 
I think these were pretty good aces. Those are good ones. Villa Marine was the one who wasted the aces. Okay. Yeah, I know. I didn't say it was Mr. Gamble. I just said it. Oh, kings. Limp. Limp. You know, Villa Marine likes to get aggressive in blind versus blind. Uh, I don't like this. I mean, it's okay to try, I guess, but I would have preferred slightly smaller. He just 3X'd it. I guess he made it look like a steal. Sometimes you think you're a genius when you make it bigger, just try to make it look yeah, like yeah. a bluff, but then, like, you just get that full. So you're like, oh. Stupid. I mean, maybe if Villamarine did have, like, a Queen Jack suited or a Queen 10, maybe he would look at it as a steal, and he's like, you know what? I'm going to jam. <laughs> it does mean that Judd Trump is still our chip leader, but Mr. Gamble is right on his heels. Villain Marine receives a walk with King Deuce. I'm sure he's very uh, <laughs> satisfied with that outcome. Do you think it benefits either of the two, Judd Trump or Jay Anderson? If Villain Marine stays alive a little bit longer. With when they have the similar stack, it doesn't benefit them at all. Um <laughs> usually that situation happens when there's a clear difference between first and second, where the second place guy is just trying to fold his way to top two. Mm -hmm. Then the chip leader gets a big advantage. But here they just would rather take the just want him to bust to get that page up. Yeah. My question was more coming from a uh, maybe like player specific point of view, maybe the strengths of Jay Anderson to put slightly more pressure if there are three people left and there are two people. But I think I'm with yeah. you with the way that Judd Trump has been playing, which is excellent throughout the entire night. I definitely don't think he's in any sort of a disadvantage. No, no, for, there's no way Judd Trump is like, uh, if you're saying, is he better than Villa Marine? I, I think Judd Trump plays some cash games, so I'm going to assume he's a bit more of a Ooh. to be better at this. Yeah, nice. All right. Maybe a jam of 13, 14 big blinds works against. Ooh, I wonder if Ace Deuce is going to get called, though, right? I mean, pocket tens. We can't mm -hmm. fold pocket tens, can we, Nanonoko? Just. No, he's not folding. Just don't. Jam. Villa Marine. That's a big jam. And you're. These tens have been good to Jay Anderson. He's not folding, by the way. Okay, I'm gonna um, knock it off when you say that. He's, like, oh. he's not folding. Um, hey, you got money on Jet Trump and Jay Anderson. This could be a lock hey. win if he holds here. Yep, ten of diamonds in the window. Why do I feel like that's gonna happen? <laughs> nope. But no, we do pick up some extra outs. Villa Marine needs an ace or a four. Did not pick up a flush draw. Does he find an ace or a four? The answer is no, he does not. That means Carlos Villa Marine is eliminated in third place. Walks away with $580,000. And we are heads up for our anniversary edition of the High Roller Super Millions. 52 weeks of Roddy and Nanonoko on the Tuesday evening. Well, Wednesday morning for Nano. And it's, I mean, we hyped him up. We said it a couple of times in the past when we have our one year anniversary, we want to see Mr. Gamble. He didn't just make it Nanonoko. He's made it to top two. He's made it top two with a, with a decent chip lead on his opponent, but it, he's mixed this straight like the first. Was, He's here to show off, man. Like this guy, two ninth places. Now he's in the top two. It's an amazing score. He's been playing amazing throughout this final table. Like, um, whereas, you know, Jay Anderson's playing great, but he's been getting pocket tens and just winning 10 million chips every single time. Just Judd Trump's been working for it. Mm -hmm. A7 offsuit with the race. Deuce three of clubs is not going to defend. You were turning into a little bit of a robot again. Never know that. Oh, Queen Jack suited against Jack 10 offsuit. Could get a funny pot here. We need to work on that internet in uh, Australia, mate. It's always bad over here, man. It's been bad here for years, for life. It's just too far know. away. Somehow Mr. Gamble <laughs> flopped best as he flopped top pair. Judd Trump does have two overs and a gut shot, but a jack is obviously no good. 
It's actually turning into a decent sized spot already, especially if Joe Trump fires again. Because I don't think Mr. Gamble is ever going anywhere. Of course not. Um, Queen Jack could put pressure, though. It does. Uh... Oh. Yeah. What about a jam here? Could Mr. Gamble jam? Dude, no. I mean, he could, but it's unnecessary. Like, they're playing for a lot of money, Roddy. Can't just start playing $5 sitting go style. Makes the call. Oh my God. No. That is insane. Mr. Gamble makes a jack high straight. Judd Trump rivers the nuts. Well, that's a full double, isn't it? It's just basically whatever price Judd Trump wants to bet, he's going to get it. If he wants to bet all it, he can get it. If he wants to bet $8 million, he'll save his opponent some chips. I think he's going to go for all of it, just hoping that Mr. Gamble has a jack too. I think he should. Because I don't think anything worse than a jack will really pay off anyways. So just go for the max. Oh, wow. Well, this might actually induce a race so. even. <laughs> Mr. Yeah, Gamble. Right. Like it's, the, it's the size where he can get called by the worst straight. And it maybe gets the jack. Because it's less than half pot, right? When you see less than half pot, it makes you tempted to just jam yourself. You think you're free rolling it. Like... Oh. Uh, 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 maybe that five dollars sit and go down the turn would have been pretty oh, good. Oh no, God. Mr. Gamble goes all in. What a hand here in heads up! And Judd Trump does get the full double with the Queen Jack, and is now the dominant. Li oh, that is that is heartbreaking. What a river! What a river for Mr. Gamble. Oh. <laughs> You should have did your suggestion, Jam. My gosh, wow. <sighs> that is a brutal one. It's not over yet. Two deuces here. I would love to see a limp jam. 21 big blinds. Just take the fold equity. People are just raising so much garbage anyways. Mm -hmm. Wow, mate. That's a pretty big swing for me. I mean, Joe Trump is break even, but a Mr. Gamble victory would have been jackpot, baby. Red penny night. No red penny night for me, unfortunately. <laughs> how, how much would you get if he wins? So, I don't know what know. the odds were for... Uh, we can take a look when the odds change again on the Your Beautiful Camera. I don't know. About 100 bucks, probably at least 8 to 1, I think it was. Oh, man. Maybe a bit more. That's all right. Yeah, I know. Elite, but, hey... You're free rolling. Thanks. I did it right. Yes. <laughs> well, technically, we are losing 50 bucks because I let you bet place a bet for me. I think in the second year, we're going <laughs> to we're going to stop remove that this. play. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not a, no, no longer a thing, guys. Unfortunately, Nananoka is going to have to if he ever makes a bet, bet with his own money. <laughs> Roddy's dollars are no go. Pocket nines for Judd Trump against the nine four offsuit. Man, what a sick hand. I can't believe that the nine just rolled off there. Yeah, super sick. Judd Trump. Oh, hey, look. Judd Trump's been fortunate. He's been playing amazing this final tail, but that he's been he's gotten fortunate in the biggest pots possible. Do you think that uh I mean I know hindsight is 2020, but do you think Mr. Gamble should always just call there the five million bet? Or do you actually are you okay with the fact that he erased? No, I like I like the call there. Um, on the turn, you mean? No, on the river. Oh, on the when, river. When Joe Trump bent five million, I can see why he jammed because it's like, well, if this guy had Queen Jack, he probably would bet more, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I would be thinking about can I get called by worse? I don't think the answer is yes, so that makes me want to call. And then the second question I would ask. Can I get the same hand to fold? I don't think he could get a, a like a naked jack to fold, so I mm -hmm. also would just call. It. That would make me want to call. If I thought like, oh, I can get a jack, the same hand to fold, then yes, I would jam because you're kind of free rolling. Mm -hmm. But there just seems like no upside. Mm -hmm. It's obviously very easy uh, to, for us to say this afterwards, but I do agree with you. It's uncharacteristic for the man who has been just crushing it throughout the entire year of the High Roller Super Millions. I mean, it goes too far to say that it's a mistake. 
And I'm sure that he looks uh, yeah. back at it and he's like, it's, damn it, I should have just It's stopped. not a big mistake, Roddy. It's just no, it's kind of no. like he got baited by the under 50% pot bet, I think is what mm -hmm. happened. I think if he had bet, say, 60%, he probably would have just called. Like, yeah. Not even close. Um, yeah. Six million, seven million, eight million, nine million, probably just calling. Wow. What a hand, what a river, but fantastic news, of course, for Judd Trump and for everyone who put a friendly bet on Judd Trump. The man has definitely shown us tonight that he knows how to play. He's kind of outflopping hey. Mr. Gamble here, too. Don't forget the whoever came into the pre-show heard that there's only $888 on him. There's someone just fired out like another seven, 800 bucks, right? Yeah. Quite a few people put some money on him. Four of diamonds on the turn is a funny one. As they both have a flush draw, but the flush draw of Mr. Gamble is ever so slightly better. It just keeps getting worse though for Anderson, right? Because now he can continue. Even this river yeah. card, like, his hand looks good. Yep. In heads up, his hand looks good. Something, something is hard to make a pair. I actually think that Judd Trump can maybe, uh, well, shoot actually. Just value bet. Yeah, he should bet. 1.4, 1.5. We're on the same page. Yes. But he doubles it. Double down, he says. 3.3 .3 million. Very gross spot for Mr. Gamble. He knows that if he calls in and he's wrong, then he's just got nothing left anymore. <laughs> yeah, he's, he'd been shoving open jamming territory. Yep. Ah. Uh. His, his hand looks like a queen or an eight. He's got mm -hmm. the worst of the two. I think he should fold this part of his range, maybe call it a queens. Uh, but, you know, it's easy with the whole cards up. He does make uh -huh. the call, though. Bad, bad, bad news. Yeah, perhaps teaming a little bit about that nine that rolled off on the river. This means that now Mr. Gamble is uh, down to, what is it, eight big blinds. It's definitely less than ten. I almost jammed nine six with spades here. It's my girlfriend's favorite hand. Just in case he's watching, make a prop. get in your last joke right. You can. <laughs> this is a call. Oh, go. Miss. oh, I mean it's not great for nine six, but I mean every great poker story starts with I jammed nine six right. We pick up some oh. extra outs. We we make a stray with an eight and a four too. Uh, that could oh, be a four. That could be four. It could be. Oh, no, it's a five. The five is no good. And that means that Joe Trump will walk away with $967,000. The phenomenal performance again, as pretty much has been the case throughout the entire year by Mr. Gamble. Second place, the Jack 10 against Queen Jack Nananoka. I mean, we've seen a lot of great hands tonight, but that was obviously the hand that determined the outcome of this hands up battle. Yeah, for sure. Hey, they got our webcam switch. They wanted you to experience being Nano Noko for this final anniversary edition. Must feel good, Rowdy. But uh, it's I been a say, wonderful. Nano Noko, you've what? never looked this good. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a great final table. I I really liked it. I thought it was very action packed. Um, Mr. Gamble, phenomenal year for him. Most profitable ta player by far. Um, winning his player, obviously Lena 900 did amazing this year too, but um, today's final table for him was very smooth sailing. I thought he played really well. I thought, I'll, I think a lot of the guys here played really well today and didn't really fault anyone, but Judd Trump, man, he, he hit those, those two queens against the pocket aces of a limitless mm -hmm. and, you know, he got fortunate with that queen jack against the other jack there, but... It's not taking anything away from him. He played amazing. He was very solid. But just because he's playing solid, he every time he made a bluff, it worked like 100%. And the biggest bluff he did was against Villa Marine. That King Jack. Yeah, he I'll raised see. that flop. He bet that turn. He jammed that river. He hand read that one so perfectly. The stack sizes he understood. He knew his opponent. He outplayed his opponent really hard that hand. And... I think he's a well-deserved winner. He two ninth places and then a, a first place. 
take it, man. Yep. Well, I mean, I, I put 34 bucks on him for a reason, because I do actually think he's good. And last two times, he was just not really able to show us what he's made of. Uh, I think he played awesome. Let's not forget about a couple of these very fun hands that we have between Villa Marine and um, Mr. Gamble, right? That small blind, big blind dynamic that they've had going on for a while. I don't know, man. Most of the time we're sitting here watching poker. I felt like I was on the, watching underwater 4D chess or something because I don't even know what was happening with the lines that they were taking. But I think that was very fun to watch. Yeah, definitely very fun. I think we had a very good dynamic amongst everyone. Um, like I said, I thought everyone actually played really well. Even Adrian Mateos. The guy didn't play many hands, but he didn't get dealt very many cards. Um, he, he chose his spots well, and you know he got a top four finish. Really, Roddy, uh, just to wrap things up about the whole year, I, it's been a lot of fun, right? 52 episodes, lots of great memorable moments. Uh, I, I loved it a lot. A lot of great champions, and obviously we have released a little bit of content around this uh, anniversary edition, and I think we probably work on a few more things. I'm with you, Nanonoko. I think I'm going to let you go off the hook since your microphone keeps turning you into a slow robot. And we know that you're a very smooth talker. It's been an absolute joy to be doing this with you for over a year. And I think it's also remarkable that neither of us has missed an episode. I guess uh, COVID has something to do with that. But I think it's been very cool. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Big congratulations to Judd Trump, of course, for winning that $975,000. Yeah, I think this was a really fun final table. We saw a couple of crazy hands, a couple of crazy runouts. We know that the Nana no Kokuros is very powerful. And apparently Pocket Force don't flop too many sets. But we hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to check out the new store that Gigi has launched, ggstore.com, where you guys can order some hoodies, t-shirt, caps, uh, face masks as well. And more items will be added in the future. And looks already pretty good. And I think it will only get better. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done that yet. And we'll be back same time, same place next week for perhaps a brand new year of the High Roller Super Millions. See you. Waiting to come back to the final table. Fedor holds things. Oh my. God. Michael Otamo is the best.